Richmond is a short track like no Ready. other. Green, green, green. Go get him. That was a Mario Kart gift. And now we get ready to rumble in Richmond. 70 years of racing here in Richmond from the dirt track to the half mile to the three quarter mile oval we know today. Fox welcomes you to the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond Raceway. Active wins leaders versus this year's winners. Look at the numbers that these drivers have put up, but no wins this season. Big fat zero. Look at this year's winners and how few career victories they have. The whole season with this brand new Gen 7 car has been topsy-turvy in the wind department, and we've shaken up our Fox booth this week. We welcome uh, Hendrick Motorsports <laughs> Vice President of Competition, Chad Knaus, for a rather different perspective, and Clint Boyer. don't know how you guys made it up here so fast. Must have had a <laughs> helicopter from that pre-race. But as a driver, Clint, you won here twice. What is it about this place? What's top of driver's mind today? Tires, tires, tires. I've talked to every one of them, including Kevin Harvick right down there. Before we came up, he was standing right there. I said, what we have to work on management, managing these runs, probably going to see a long run or two, and everybody's worried about their fall off, slipping and sliding, being easy on that gas pedal, not spinning the tires too much. Chad, when Fox called to ask you to do a couple of races, you picked this one first. Why? Specifically, I wanted this racetrack because this is such a unique track. Tire fall off like Clint had managed, mentioned a moment ago. Your tire sets, you've only got about seven sitting on pit road. You really got to be creative about how you begin to call this race as you move forward. You got to make sure you got some good tires at the end, and this is going to be a fun race tonight. All right, well, let's bring in our crew chief, Larry McReynolds, to talk a little about race strategy today. Well, Mike, like a football coach, I've been working on my strategy all week long, but I have to keep adjusting that strategy. And the biggest factor that I've looked at is normally Richmond does not have a lot of cautions, but the trends of 2022, average number of cautions per race, 10, the last thing you want to do is make a green flag stop, get burnt by a caution, because that, will, Mike, will take your good day and make it go bad. You know, her heartbeat. All right, field is on the pace laps. Uh, Who's got the dial tone today? I'm going to that four car. Man, I, I told you, I talked to him. I want you guys to hear it from the horse's mouth. Hey, Kevin Harvick's Boyer up in the Fox Sports booth. You got us? Yes, sir. All right, man, you told me. Tires saving and managing these long runs is the name of the game. How are you going to do that today? Well, the first thing I did is I got a bottle of baby powder out and I put it on the bottom of my shoe because <laughs> I feel like the bottom of my shoe is going to get wore out today trying to take care of those tires. but. Everybody on our Mobile One Ford Mustang has done a good job all weekend, and you know how this place is. No tires, no go. Absolutely, man. Nobody manages it better than you. Your car was good yesterday. I want to wish you luck. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Kevin Harvick, a roll-off seventh. Here's your Toyota Owner's 400 starting grid. Ryan Blaney won the pole yesterday, his third of the season, and William Byron has his best Richmond start. Kyle Busch, six-time Richmond winner, and Chase Briscoe ties his best start of the season. Eric Jones had his second top ten finish of the year last week. Martin Truex has won three of the last five here. There's Harv, a three-time Richmond winner, and Ross Chastain, whose average finish in the month of March, second. Christopher Bell, top fives in both Richmond races last year, and Eric Almirola, top ten in two of the last three here. Joey Logano and Cole Custer in row six. The field will scroll across the bottom of your screen as we get down to Pitt Road and Jamie Little. Well, Mike, a year ago, Alex Bowman drove from deep in the field to win his first career short track race right here at Richmond. Well, he's gone on to win four times since then. Now, he qualified deep in the field once again, but he told me not to worry. Long run speed is their strength. And he also said driving this car at this racetrack is the most normal this brand new car has felt. Keep your eye on that 48, Regan Smith. Well, Jamie, there's a couple tracks that Chase Briscoe has felt lost at over his cup career. One of them being Richmond, the other being Phoenix. Phoenix, a couple weeks ago, Chase managed to get a win, his first career win, in fact. Now we come to Richmond. The team brought the exact same race car. They feel very good about their chances of improving on his career best 16th place finish here at Richmond. Thanks, Regan. Let's take a look at today's race analysis. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. 400 laps, 300 miles. And the stage length's a little different now. 70, 160, and 170 laps. 
pit road speed 40 miles an hour and the fuel window 125 to 135. Going to go green next time by as the all new 300 plus horsepower Toyota Camry TRD uh, leads the field. Two cars did not get to qualify, Justin Haley and Greg Biffle, both due to inspection issues, and they will do a pass-through after they take the green flag on the racetrack, pass through down pit road at pit road speed. And the number two to the rear, they made a brake change on Austin Sindrick's car. For a fast car again, guys, let's stay on it here, 400 laps. Keep track of it, make it our day. Good luck. Thank you guys for all the hard work. Good luck on pit road. As they come to green, we're going to listen to Tony Hirschman, spotter for Kyle Busch, firing off from third position in that light blue Toyota. Ryan Blaney of Ford, William Byron in a Ready. Chevrolet will lead Ready. them to green at Richmond. Outside 14, one off the dome. Still outside 14. Tight half. No quarter. Hanging to upper clear. He's in line, half. Front four, single file. Martin Truex to the outside of Eric Jones for fifth. Ryan Blaney, your leader, said he didn't expect to run a single lap today as hard as either of those qualifying laps yesterday. And as of right now, if you're a crew chief on pit road, you're telling your driver, take care of your tires. Start saving your tires. Because right now, if we've had a full Xfinity race, a couple days of practice, that Xfinity rubber's on the racetrack, the drivers are going to start complaining here pretty quickly about that other rubber being on the track. So just take care of your stuff, and let's get through this first stage. Yeah, and that's why you see these guys trying to sort it out. And what I mean by that, get single file is, and, and get set in as quick as possible so you can start that process of management managing those rear tires second place Kyle Busch looking to the inside on William Byron nothing there he's been running a little bit higher through three and four trying to get a run on the 24 car as he gets down into turn one well William saw that happen the last lap and he figured he'd take that away from him and look at the gain massive gain off of turn four and watch right to the back bumper you're going to see everybody start figuring that out. Moving up. Low air pressure. Tires are pretty square. As the pressures come up, your car's kind of light on its feet, sliding the front end out from underneath. David trying to get rotated, be a little bit squirrely under the throttle. Have to be careful with that. But then they start coming in, and then immediately, almost immediately, you start pacing yourself, just like you were talking about and managing the run. Three car breakaway, three quarters of a second on Chase Briscoe in fourth. Martin Truex in fifth, and then Ross Chastain. Who would have thought that six races into the season, the three names we'd be saying most would be Briscoe, Chastain, and Suarez. What a start to this season. Think, it's been all over the place for sure. You never know what to expect. And, and you know, Chastain and their win, the track house racing, his teammate Daniel Suarez, uh, you know, leading all the laps that he did before they had trouble. I mean, it's just all over the place on trying to pinpoint who the lead guy is right now. I don't think there is one. Fourth place. Martin Truex advances. Do you have him on your scorecard for today? I do 100%. I watched that car in practice. I went down to turns one and two, and I watched them roll through the center of that corner. 45 looks like he may have a problem going down the front straightaway. Looks like he's weaving back and forth. Might have, have a tire down. Off completely, and then turn it back on. So he's cycling the, the ECU right there is what they're saying. So down on power, going to cycle it. Probably trying to see if he has any fuel in it. That's probably why he was wiggling it. Kyle Busch looking outside. Fuel. Chad, it, it, <laughs> if you can't be out of fuel, Chad. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. <laughs> Not at this gonna point. going to get a caution. I don't think he's going to make it around. Well, Definitely. And just cycle your switches, cycle the power. Cycle the power back on the ECU. Does it refire? I don't think so. We're Sitting right in the middle of the back straightaway. Could be fuel pickup, caution. could be electrical, but it will be the first caution of the day for mm. Kurt Busch. See, we all talked about setting the set this race up. 
the history of this race, how easy it is to manage and understand right, what's going to happen. No fuel Boom. Pressure yet. Ten laps in, we have our first caution. No fuel pressure, Kurt Busch says. Let's uh, let's listen to what happened here. Oh. Shut off right here. Shut off. So there he is. He's wiggling it back and forth, trying to see if and that's just an old move if you feel like that your car wasn't getting the fuel in the pickup. Yeah, that thing should have been full of fuel. That's obviously probably a lift pump issue or an electrical issue or something along those lines. That's that's really unfortunate. I had high marks for those guys based off of what I saw in practice yesterday. So he is getting pushed back to pit road. <laughs> By that uh, the bumper of that uh, big Ford Super Duty. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. 13 laps complete under caution for Kurt Busch, who stalled on the back straightaway. They brought him back behind pit wall. The computers are hooked up, trying to diagnose the mechanical problem with his fuel pressure. Now, surprisingly, a bunch of cars led by Kyle Larson came to pit road. Larry? Yeah, with only nine laps on the tires, remember these teams have nine sets for the race. Eight laying in the pits, one on the car. One of them is a transfer set from qualifying, which we call scuffs. We know for a fact this is what the five car Kyle Larson put on, which is about two lap scuffs. Thanks, Larry. Now you still have a chance to win $10,000 of Clint's cash by playing Fox Bet Super 6. Scan the QR code now, download the app, and enter your picks about today's race for a free shot at your share of the jackpot. Get on there, folks. Free app. I'm telling you, get on your Fox Super 6 app. Put your picks in. I think this is a good race to win some of my cash. It really is. I think some of these questions might be a little bit easier. Might have some company in the win today. Austin Cedric stopped along with Larson, Ty Dillon, Stenhouse, Ware, Haley, who got the free pass, and Biffle. 
Ryan Blaney is your leader. He has led every race this season. And he fires off ahead of William Byron. Three wide with Eric Jones stuck in the middle. Yeah, I saw Kevin shoot to the inside, got underneath of him, got him three wide. Actually, a little bit of contact off the of two. A little more off of four. Ross Chastain battling for third. Got a good launch off turn four, beat Kyle Busch into the corner. Now it's uh, Bush's chance to return the favor. Be interesting to see how much of a run he gets when he's committed and has to stay up on the top side compared to the one versus being able to take advantage of it. There he's got it. it. Drives right by him. By the way, that on the back of Kyle's car, that's not wah wah. That's a. <laughs> it's a gas station convenience store chain. Wah wah. Yeah. Wah wah. Oh. Not wah wah. <laughs> you got to get out more, Mike. That is amazing. <laughs> it's a heck of a gas station, too. Got plenty of them M&Ms. I wish they'd bring us up some. <laughs> and this is what I saw about that 19 yesterday, right around the bottom, left side tires right on the yellow line, saving his tires. And that may not come into play just right now. But man, let's get to about lap 30, lap 35, and see if he's still down there or not. You picked up on that right away yesterday, Chad, and, and was saying that. And I'm telling you, being able to do that early is one thing, but being able to do that throughout the length of these runs, very, very challenging, asking a lot out of the car. Well, in the first 10 laps, Kyle Busch tried twice to get by William Byron without success. Now, looks like he's got second place. This outside, Kyle Busch has it figured out up off of four. You see the run. We saw it earlier with uh, uh, Kyle Busch getting it, the run off of four. Now he's getting it figured out in one and two. Clint, in your pavement short track career, did you ever set your car up for the outside when everybody else wanted to be on the bottom? Nope. <laughs> I was okay. a catfish. I loved <laughs> running the bottom of the racetrack. And honestly, I could just be more consistent with running that bottom, hunting that yellow line right on the bottom of the track, low and digging. But honestly, a, a lot of success I found at this racetrack, especially in the long run, was moving up, just like you see Kyle Busch doing, diamonding that corner. And it's all about getting that drive, the straight drive up off of these corners. Really interesting thing about Richmond that I've noticed over the years is when you race during the day, if you've got a lot of sunshine on the track, it, it lends itself to exactly what you're talking about, Clint. Guys searching, looking for fresh pavement, looking for clean pavement, because that's where you get the additional grip. I think you're spot on right here. I just want to go somewhere on this racetrack where I don't have to constantly just pull on that wheel and scrub those front tires off. Look at this. William Byron making a pass on Kyle Busch. Crossover move. William did it on the bottom. Now Kyle goes to the inside. You see William fighting a little bit of loose can get condition getting into one. I think he's going to prevail when we get down here. And this could be one of those tracks, Clint, where through three and four right now with the way the rear suspension is, there you get a is. good launch off of turn four. But then when you get down to turns one and two, you maybe you want to get back down to the bottom. But what what happened right there, he got in position just like you said, and that position made Kyle Busch have to pull on that wheel off of off four, gets loose, and then you drive right by him. Back at 15th place. Our first side by side battle on the racetrack, Brad Keselowski inside Daniel Suarez. Everybody single file ahead of them. You hear how hard he had to get out of the gas and wait for that thing with Daniel on his outside. Really let that car roll around there. Door. It's a process, and, and Chad, you alluded to it, it's, and it's a frustrating process. You start the pass, you get underneath the guy, and if he hangs on your door out there, it just kills your speed, your momentum, because you need that real estate to be able to move up and get the momentum. And just like we saw right there, what that allowed the eight car to do is run up on the back of those guys. 
But look at this battle for second with the 18 and the 24. Oh, yeah. He's Getting way, way up, up towards the top. But look at the run. Searching I see Diamonds angle. is straight in that corner up. All about keeping that car straight under the throttle. Jamie, at lap eight, Kurt Busch went behind the wall. Have they made any progress? Yeah, they've actually taken him to the garage, said that the engine had stumbled. It's a fuel pickup issue. And since it's mechanical, they can take all the time they want to try and fix this to get him back out. Obviously, his chances of winning the race are over, but he's trying to keep that zero DNFs intact. So they'll continue working, Mike. Yeah, so with that fuel pickup issue, that's really an interesting thing. So we've got two small pick lift pumps in the fuel cell, and then we've got a main lift pump. So right there, the way this thing sounds is it sounds to me like it's a main lift pump because that's what feeds the engine. So they could have a real problem here. That's not something that can be easily changed. You have to take the whole fuel cell top off. Um, not a lot of those parts actually floating around, so they're probably going to have to go get one off a backup car, try to stick in there and see if they can get them to gain some pressure. They're going to be multiple laps down. It's really unfortunate for that 45 team uh, because they were actually looking really good in practice. Sixth place race here. Uh, Christopher Bell in the 20 trying to make the pass stick on Chase Briscoe but they're double wide for two rows back along with Jones and Logano and Kevin Harvick has caught that group make it a fivesome I think when you're battling it out like this you see Eric Jones get loose on the bottom that's that real estate you're talking about having to pull on the wheel to stay off the car on the outside of you you get loose but I'm um, and these battles, these, you know, throw a blanket over them as tight as they are. I look for these guys with the opportunity of a fifth gear to start shifting. And I think that's exactly where you would optimize that is trying to make a pass, get your car rotated and beat them off the corner. And one thing we don't have this week is a competition caution. So we're going to run the whole 70 laps of stage one uh, without a scheduled break. 32 laps complete. Ryan Blaney has led the ball in his Penske Mustang. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Built for America. By Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. And by Verizon Frontline, built for 5G. Built to make a real difference on the front lines.
39 laps complete. Ryan Blaney's led them all. Michael McDonald just made a stop for four tires. Here are today's Ford track facts at Richmond. 33 Cup wins. They've been racing here since 1953. Paul Goldsmith got the first for the Blue Oval in 1957. And here's Brad Keselowski, who went to victory lane here in 2020. Chase Briscoe and Chase Elliott had a bit of door to door right here. <laughs> I say Briscoe came down a little bit, but it kind of takes me back to maybe what happened before that. I don't know if he didn't like something that the nine did, but. It didn't really look like he got loose either. He came down to him. I think that was maybe some payback if I had to guess. That was the second hit in the fight, not the first <laughs> hit. No. Here's Martin Truex in the top five. He's had a lot of success here, Regan. Well, Mikey's had a ton of success at this racetrack, and so far today, that success continuing. Martin very happy with that race car right now. Just a little bit of brake shake early on for him. Crew Chief James Small told me a big part of that was they unloaded on Saturday's practice as good as they have all year long because much of what they learned at Phoenix a few weeks ago is correlating to this car form now, finally. So we've been green since about lap 14, so 30 laps of green flag racing. And we've been wondering with that five speed sequential gearbox, will shifting come into play here? The biggest cause for shifting here will just be the massive tire fall off that we always see at Richmond. I do love um, how these cars shift. It, it, it makes it a lot more fun to go out there and try and change gears. When the tires slow down, you might be shifting. Obviously, to, to be able to accelerate off the corner faster and, and passing cars and things like that, if you're kind of boxed in on the bottom. So maybe the pace falls off really fast and we have to shift. So it looks like you know we may not have to shift with the tire fall off we have, but we'll just have to see. That's uh, how many different ways of saying maybe. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. A big maybe, but that's the unknowns yep. about taking this car to these racetracks that we do. But I think it goes back to where I commented first. When I mean, those guys were in that, you know, dogfight, if you will, where you could throw a blanket over them and you're moving, you're, you're you know, you're trying to make a move and get yourself in position. That may be how you do that with a downshift. 46 laps complete. Let's check with Jamie. And Kevin Harvick has slipped a couple of spots back to ninth, but his spotter Tim Fidoa up on the spotter stand having some issues. Hear anything? But you don't? Do you not hear me? Uh, we only hear you every now and then. Ari's down here. They said there's definitely interference. I'm not sure. You tell me what you want to do. Nothing we can do right now. And you heard him right there. They've got some interference on their channel. So what they'll do at the end of stage one, they're just going to swap his frequencies to the second channel. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. That's uh, something you fight every week. Uh, Racing Electronics handles the radios for that team. And, you know, un until the caterers and everybody get their radios fired up when the race is ready to start, you have no idea if somebody's going to be on your channel. You are 100% accurate in that. And you look, we've got a packed house here today, a lot of people, a lot of new people. Everybody's got a scanner, everybody's got a radio, people are trying to talk to one another. It gets really difficult. As soon as we walk in here on race day morning, cell phones kind of struggle a little bit. Cell phones are hard to like dial out, get messages, all of that. As you're checking the radios, you start to get that feedback. Not uncommon for a short track at all. Kyle Larson moving up. He has gained 17 spots since the restart. Uh, the first of the cars that stopped for tires at lap 12. See how good that car rotated and how straight he was, low and straight up off of four. That's what it takes to have speed here and to be able to drive up through the field. It's one thing to have speed and kind of manage that, but to be able to have the maneuverability in your car where you can move around like he's doing right there, get an angle and pass somebody, asking a whole nother challenge. He's pretty loose though. 20 laps to go in stage one. Ryan Blaney has led all 50 so far as we go Fox side by side.
Hey race fans, Jesse Punch here live from Richmond Raceway. I'll be here all day long bringing you updates from Pitt Road. Kevin Harvick, that four car, pretty steady run for the team so far today. Kevin's still looking for his first win of the season, and he is one of those veteran drivers in the field that's hoping that experience here will pay off today. Kevin is one of the drivers, one of two drivers in the field with the most starts here at Richmond with 41 starts each for Kevin Harvick, the other driver being Kurt Busch. In talking with the field, they tend to agree that despite having a new race car this season here at Richmond, you're racing the racetrack. So as I said, veterans hoping that track time and years of experience will pay off in their favor today. Fourteen laps to go in stage one. Ryan Blaney holding off William Byron by one full second. Kyle Busch four back. Ross Chastain four and a half and Martin Truex five and a half. Now as you saw Ricky Stenhouse made the pass on Daniel Suarez and then showed a little bit of displeasure here <laughs> by taking his line away. Almost and a little paint maybe. Okay, slide job gone bad there. Didn't quite have him clear. Now earlier Chase Briscoe while battling Chase Elliott for a top 10 spot had contact and Regan he's dropped what a dozen spots since Mike he has been dropping since then the unfortunate part for Chase right now is there is nothing wrong with that car from that contact the issues he's having is it's just a very tight race car right now meaning he can't get those front tires to turn through the middle of the corner at all and that doesn't get better that just get continues to get worse and worse and it compounds as you go. The crew chief right now, he's thinking, man, let's just get it to the stage. That's all we got to do. And that's a hard thing to fix. Then you start freeing the car up. Now you're loose in. All right, Ross Chastain has taken third place from Kyle Busch. What's up with the 18? About eight to 10 laps after I said it was tight middle, the tight went away, and it's just been rear splitting ever since. I mean, I can still turn left in the middle sometimes. It's like Seventh place right here. Joey Logano, Chase Elliott. With 10 to go in stage one, Larry will give us a look at today's Verizon race strategy. Well, Mike, again, it's kind of a moving target, but remember those two stages, stage two and the final stage, they are long stages. We've already almost completed stage one. We've not pitted in this stage, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to split those two stages in half. I'm going to pit somewhere there about lap, about lap 150, and then again somewhere around lap. 155 on into that next stage. But again, I've been off the pit box for 20 years. I reserve the right to change my strategy if needed. That's your Verizon <laughs> race strategy. And Larry, that's, that's another maybe. That is exactly why I wanted to come up here and work with this race with Larry Mack and everybody back in Charlotte and you guys up here because there's so many opportunities here. So many things to consider as we get going here. I'm telling you, the six car and the four both, these cars are fast. So they've figured out the long run. Both of them have good long run speed and are marching back up through the field. Great run for the six car of Keselowski. And a nice turnaround for Brad, who's only had 109 top 10 laps run since Daytona. And neither of those drivers took tires. Uh, the first of the cars that did is Kyle Larson in 15. Seven to go to the end of the stage. Can Blaney sweep the whole stage? I think he can. Yeah, he's good. He looks really fast right now. He was good in practice, obviously qualified really well. And they only made that one run in practice. Went out there and just said, look, we're going to run this practice out, get a feel for our race car, see what we've got. Did a really good job. 
looks looks like they got it sorted out today. He said this is his worst track. He's never <laughs> led a lap here <laughs> in Cup <laughs> until today. It's just all part of this topsy turvy season that we're having well, so I don't far. know if he's topsy or Terzy, but I'm telling you that <laughs> car and and the, the new opportunity of learning this new car nobody in my opinion has rise to the occasion better than Ryan Blaney Jamie well, he used to be turvy but today he's topsy leading these laps <laughs> cars so far so good and that's his crew chief there Jonathan Hassler he told me they ran that 45 lap run yesterday in practice and Blaney got out of the car. His focus was managing those tires, and he said, I need to do a better job. I'm going to start at the drop of the green flag. He has been so aware of that tire conservation for this race. And not only is he leading, Jamie, he is pulling away. He's got 1.3 seconds now on William Byron as uh, Chase Elliott drops under Christopher Bell. This is for sixth. And I'm watching a lot of these drivers out there, the guys that are consistently making fast lap time, they're running left side tires on that yellow line. So me as a crew chief, what I'm thinking about right now, I'm watching the data that I've got coming into the pit box. I'm trying to think, okay, how am I? Because my driver's frustrated. He's not probably going the direction he wants to. So I'm like, okay, buddy, here's what we need to do. We got to try to get the car set up to where you're able to run with your left side tires on that yellow line. That's what the fast guys are doing. Getting ready to come to the stage end right now. Pits are closed. This is when all of that conversation starts to happen. So 70 laps coming up. That'll be the end of stage one. None of the drivers who stopped at lap 12 for tires are going to be in the top 10 and score points here. Truex underneath Kyle Busch and that may change fourth place here. I told you guys start of the race. That's going to be one to watch right there. He is doing a really good job. Yeah there's definitely a lot of guys that are wanting to this stage to come to an end and make these adjustments but man some of them I'm going to say that 19 Chad you're exactly right I like that Christopher Bell's fast Harvick Keselowski in that six those guys are really impressing me on these long runs look at that nine car all the way up there for a top ten in stage one Ryan Blaney now has three stage wins this season most of all cup drivers.
The USFL is now only 13 days away. April 16th is the kickoff. Generals, Stallions, Primetime, Fox, and NBC. Only 10 seconds from now. Pit stops. It'll be the first one of the day for the top 14 cars. Led by Blaney, Byron, and Chastain. Let's see if the Gibbs boys try one of these special stops they've been advertising on Twitter. Well, let's find out. Regan. Mike Ross Chastain, last week's winner. Good again this week. That race car just a little bit tight early on. Got better as he ran. Martin Truex Jr., the rear tires on that race car are gone, and he's got bad brake shake. And you see they are trying the new pit stop choreography that we've been hearing so much about. Jamie? Kyle Busch as well on the 18. All four members run around the front of the race car. All hands on deck. They're even making a chassis adjustment on the 18. Getting four tires on here. First time live trying this new choreography. Meanwhile, the 24 chassis adjustment a little too free. And the 12 of Ryan Blaney overall great. He said the car had really good drive off. Here's the Ram race off pit road and Ryan Blaney squeaks it out. Ahead of Chastain, Chase Elliott and Christopher Bell each pick up three spots while William Byron has some difficulty and drops six. Let's talk to the stage one winner. Hey, Ryan Blaney, it's Boyer up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, hey, you got it. Man, that hot rod's looking good. Looked like it was holding the bottom, doing everything you asked it to do, winning that first stage. How's it feel? Feels really good. I, uh, we've been working really hard to try to get Rich foot better for us, and uh, you know it's, it's it's been a lot of fun so far. It's down the pole and leading that first stage and win the stage, and hopefully uh, you know make the right adjustments here and see what we can do. But I'm having a good time so far. Just gotta keep on top of the racetrack. All right, buddy. Good luck. Thank you. William Byron's pit crew, Larry tells us, had difficulty removing the right rear wheel as Ryan Blaney celebrates his stage one win at Richmond.
Penalties on pit stops. Alex Bowman pitting out of the box. He won this race last year after a tire violation. He'll have to come back again. Uh, Cody Ware over the wall too soon. Let's take a look at this pit stop and watch. You're going to see all of the crew come around the front of the car so the rear tire changer and carrier don't have to wait till the car goes by before they jump over pit wall and come around. It also means they can go back around the front of the car and not interfere with the work of the gas man. It's, it's a really clean choreography when it all works properly. And these guys have been touting about, you know, how good this is since before the season. Actually, a rule change to allow the teams to go ahead and approach the car in this manner. And I do think that there's possibility that it could benefit uh, some pit road times when everybody gets it all squared away. But right now, it's not quite there, obviously. They held serve at best on pit road right there. Um, but, but right now, everybody is on pins and needles coming onto pit road. I think that probably impacts a little bit. Regan? Mike, the only Joe Gibbs car that did not do that pit stop, the 20 of Christopher Bell. The reason being, they have a light pole in the middle of their pit box. They weren't sure how the choreography would work based on where he stops in the pit box. They wanted to see where he stopped before they determined if they do it. Uh, but Larry tells us they were the fastest of the four Gibbs cars. <laughs> exactly. If you're going to advertise a new way, man, you better show up. And I want a pole in my pit box. The old way outrun <laughs> I, you. I'm looking. There's a lot of poles in the pit boxes down there. Here they come to the Geico restart zone to start stage two. Blaney and Chastain on the front row. Good. Three wide into turn one here. Chase Elliott in the nine had trouble getting up through the gearbox. I don't know if he spun the tires a little bit more than likely. And Kyle Busch going to win that battle for fourth place. It looks like. Until Chase stuffs it into turn three. Single file through fifth three wide in the middle of the pack. Those usually don't end with everybody nope. happy. <laughs> Austin Sindrick got into Tyler Reddick's number eight just a little bit there. Casual contact. Harrison cars. Burton tries for the middle. Eric Olero, he's trying to get down, just can't quite get it finally. He just clipped it there. Okay, yeah. I'll get in there. I'll get in there. Harrison gave him a, a break on that. Right here is a crew chief. Once again, you're telling your driver, take care of your tires right now for me. Just please take care of your tires. It's going to come back and it's going to pay dividends late on. But man, it's really hard to get your driver not to get to that gas pedal when he's trying to race for position right now. Seventh place at stake there. Logano on the outside of Byron. Now watch the nine on the restart. And you'll see that Chase Elliott does not take off well. Second car on the inside. Oh, so oh pretty bad. Tires. Yep. And that stacked everything up and Kyle Busch was able to go through the middle and pass that whole group. It spun pretty hard. It's almost like it was in tried first gear instead of second. Sixth place now for Logano who keeps moving forward. And we listened in on the 19, Martin Truex. I don't know about the brakes. I don't know if we're getting them on here. We're trying to do anything, or I, I have no idea. Did anything with fans or bias do anything? I tried the fans for about five laps, and it, it was as bad or maybe worse, so I turned them back off. I don't know what to do. I, I haven't messed with bias at all. Just the brake too, because I got so loose in there in the long run. This track is notorious, notorious for brake issues, and it can be on one side of the scale or the other. It can be that you've gotten your brakes too hot and you start to get buildup or something on the rotor that's starting to create a chatter or something that doesn't feel right. Or on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you don't use the brakes enough. You don't get them up to temperature enough and they have a chatter because of that. Really a difficult place. Which usually I pick the latter for this conversation because on that longer run, you start slowing everything down. You back the corner up. You don't use the brakes near as much. Those brakes have an optimum temperature that they want to be. And if you get that thing cooler than that, they start building pad material up, start shaking, and no place does it worse than here in Richmond. Look at Hamlin and Harvick side by side. In any other year, these would be two drivers you'd expect to be right at the front contending for the win. But it takes time to get to the front here as they race for 10th place. 
as we have these brake problems, you know, you start to think about the fans, the cooling and all that. And I bet our old Larry Mack, I bet he can show us a little something about that. Well, Chad, we certainly can because a lot of things changed about this next gen car. We know that on the wheel, we went from a 15 inch diameter reel to an 18 inch, even though we went from steel to aluminum. You build the inside of the wheel bigger, they're going to fill it up with brakes. Look at how big this brake package is. It's about 30% more braking, and Chad, you know how much brake you use here at this three-quarter mile track, especially getting off into turn one. But I think that's why you start having the trouble with that, that much more braking. All of a sudden, you don't need it as much. When you start slowing your pace down, you back off of those brakes because they have so much more brake than they're used to. You get those temperatures cooled off, and now the thing starts shaking. And speaking of just that, here's Ryan Blaney. Got some vibrations under braking that I didn't have the first round under braking in the wheel entry. A vibration in the brakes. Once again, I'm going to say it like I said before, it doesn't usually get better. They typically don't fix themselves. You might get yourself into a position where you can tape off the brakes a little bit, try to get a little bit more heat in there if you are working on the wrong side of the spectrum. But man, nine times out of 10, that sticks with you all race long. Chase Elliott carrying our uh, A-Shock Energy camera this week. Has uh, a lot of support here as Ryan Blaney continues to lead at lap 92. Keep your hands on the wheel. Haven't seen a lot of shifting, but as we get longer into a run, uh, we may. And we'll show it to you on our onboard cameras. 99 laps complete, 29 into 160 laps of stage two. Well, let's talk, uh, let's get to shifty Regan Smith here. Well, Mike, ask and you shall receive. You've mentioned the shifting. If anybody's doing it or not doing it, take a listen to Kyle Larson's radio under this last yellow. Uh, technique wise, is anybody 
should be. But the best cars are not. I did notice when you were, and obviously understood why. And then I think, you know, with the way our car is driving, you're probably getting everything you can out of it with that balance. Here, we tried going the other way on air pressure from what we did the first time. Why does Cliff Daniels sound almost just like Chad Knauss on the radio? <laughs> almost. Clint, do you get that? I, I hate to say this. He reminds me of an air traffic controller on the radio. <laughs> exactly what he sounds like. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> but I'm telling you, everything that he says, I'm going to put to the bank because that yes. car is always seems to be on point and fast. Those guys do a great job. You know, Cliff is awesome. He and his group, they study super hard with all the resources that they've got at their fingertips at Hendrick Motorsports. And he's a very matter of fact kind of guy. And uh, usually not a ton of emotion, just facts. Hey, this is what we have to do to make our car go faster or what's going on. And it's just, just fun to watch those guys continue to improve as they go. Battle and for second here with Christopher Bell passing the one of Ross Chastain. I told you at the end of that last stage, I saw the 20 of Christopher Bell really starting to roll. Had good long run pace. I think you're seeing it again here in this second run. Ford with the lead, Chevy second, Toyota third. Blaney, Chastain, Bell. Ryan Blaney has now led over 300 laps this year. That is two, three quarters as many as what he led all of last season. Wow, it's a lot of laps. Let's go back to fifth place. Chase Elliott, Jamie. Chase Elliott, the only Hendrick driver without a win this year. And I talked to his crew chief, Alan Gustafson. He told me they unloaded yesterday, and it was like a white knuckle event. He said, we were off, and we were down on speed, and they qualified 15th. He said they made a few adjustments, and it certainly helped today. He's already gained 10 positions despite that stumble on the last restart. And he was doing some shifting as that uh, last long run wore on. He's the second highest Chevy in the race behind Chastain. What I really like about what I see here with Chase, if you're a crew chief trying to look and see what's going on, because you have to use all of your tools, his hands are very calm on the steering wheel. Like he's not doesn't he's not sawing the wheel a tremendous amount. He doesn't look like he's out of control. It's just nice and smooth. The guy's saving his tires. He understands where he's at. He's running the top five and he's doing a really good job right there. But these are the types of things as a crew chief, you're like, okay, I'm listening to my driver. I'm looking at what the TV's got to show me. I'm looking to where he's riding on the racetrack, looking at the lap time, and you put all that together to try to figure out exactly where you're stacking up. From looking at it, from my perspective, the car just looks very neutral. Very, you know, he's not overpowering this wheel, having to lean on it really hard to keep the car turning in the center of the corner. It looks pretty neutral, free up off the corner. Just pretty good balance. Denny Hamlin, Chris Busher for 11th place here. Well, his teammate was fast in that first uh, run. You know, if they had some air pressure differences or anything, at least a little bit, they probably made those adjustments on that pit stop. Now you have both your cars marching to the front. Only two drivers in the top 13 right now have been to victory lane this year, Ross Chastain and William Byron. We heard Ryan Blaney talking about a brake shutter, Jamie? Well, good news for Ryan Blaney fans. As of right now, he says it has gone away. No vibration, and the team's response was maybe it was just low air pressure. Well, I was wrong. It's another maybe, <laughs> but it's another maybe. Right? Clearly, it does fix itself yeah. here in Richmond if things are going just how you want them to. And I guess if you've led 111 laps or so, it is going exactly the way you want it. But Clint said it. He's If he's out front in clean air and he can just roll the corner and stay off those brakes, well, maybe good things can happen. Well, now you're starting to see him in traffic and things like that. Again, there's a temperature that they want to run, that optimum temperature where all of those gremlins go away. And if, as a driver inside that car, you can dig dictate that temperature if you're overcharging a corner and a lot of times you adjust your car with your driving style at a track like this if that thing's loose in I'm going to charge that corner hard use a lot of brake and try to build some temperature into those front tires to hopefully try to help myself and tighten my car up on a short track like Richmond those are some things you can do inside that car to try to help yourself try to help the balance of that car. Chad, you know what you just learned. As a crew chief analyst in the booth, unlike being on the box, you can make a call like that, and you don't have to take the heat on Monday about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. 
Alex <laughs> Bowman restarted 28th. He's gained five spots after that uh, pit road penalty. 112 laps complete. Ryan Blaney has led them all so far. One hundred nineteen of four hundred laps complete. Ryan Blaney the leader, but here are your Toyota top performers. Christopher Bell has moved into second. Kyle Busch is fourth. Martin Truex sixth. Denny Hamlin just outside the top ten, and Bubba Walla in twenty second. Getting deeper into the run. Let's uh, check our onboard drivers. See who's taking that right hand and using it to shift. Saw Chase Elliott do it a couple of laps ago. Saw Brad reach his left hand out, get a little fresh air out there. Look at this. Yeah. This is something Chad and I saw. See Brad Keselowski that points on his steering wheel there. I'm interested to know what he has going on. I think that may be a guide. Maybe he's using that to, to you know, correlate how tight or, or how much wheel he has in the center of the corner. What do you think? Well, I think it could be for sure. There's definitely uh, tools that you could use there. But I think that very well could be a situation where you're on pit road. Yeah. You turn your wheel to the right a little bit to make sure you can get the right side tires off of it. You turn the wheel to the left a little bit to make sure you get the left side sure tires off of it because you've had so many issues with tire clearance and the guy's yeah. trying to get the wheels and tire assembly out of the wheel well. I like that. I like yours better. You see the nine shifting now. So he downshifted probably as he was going through traffic there. Uh, you get more bogged down. <laughs> Fast friends again. Mm. Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick are back at it. This time they're battling for 11th. And here comes Martin Truex to pit road. Regan. 
White crew chief James Small just hopped on the radio and said, Pit this time, Martin did. That race car just a little too tight in the middle, can't get it to turn. And the brake shake, as we've heard earlier, is still a problem for him, shaking the wheel out of his hands at times. And Larry Mack and I were just talking about that during the break. Man, we were wondering if about this point in time, we might see some guys try to do a double pit stop through this and have a triple stint. Larry, you got any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, if you go back to our Verizon race strategy, we based it off of a lot of cautions and maybe splitting it in half. But what we're seeing James Small do there with Mark Trex Jr., he's going to do it in thirds. He's going to probably run somewhere around, oh, you know, 50 laps of a stint here. What do you gain there? By breaking it into thirds, as uh, Kyle Busch comes yep. to pit road, he's got both the RFK cars coming with him. They were both in the top ten, and William Byron pitting. Regan? Mike, it's been a good day so far for Brad Keselowski. That race car, good on entry, just a little bit too tight across the middle for him right now. Jamie? Kyle Busch in that 18, been pretty good all weekend. He's a little bit too tight in the center, a little loose on exit as they work and continue. A four-tire stop here. William Byron, remember they had that slow pit stop last time on pit road. They just made that chassis adjustment. A four-tire stop here. Make sure that left rear goes on and it's smooth. Harvick, Sendrick, Reddick, and Suarez are pitting under green. A lot of monkey see monkey do in this type of situation. You don't want to be the first guy to put your toe out there, but if you're the first guy, you're the one that capitalizes the most in this type of situation because you're the first guy on track with fresh tires and you can really start to make some hay. Jamie, what have you got down there? Well, Kevin Harvick was yelling on the radio that he just has no rear drive. The tires are gone. He couldn't wait to come in and get these four fresh sticker tires. Good stop. Last year's winner, Alex Bowman, now comes to pit road and with him come uh, the leader. Uh, Bubba Wallace. And here's the leader, Ryan Blaney. Harrison Burton completes his stop. Corey LaJoy is in. Here comes Kyle Larson. Jamie. And the 48 had pitted outside his box and got that penalty on the first stop. It's because he couldn't see his signboard the way it was through the pillar in the race car. So he asked him to hold that signboard out longer. Looks like he had no problem this time. Regan. Mike Cross Chastain, yet again, speed this week. Every week out of this one car, too loose in and off of the corners right now for him. Joey Logano, Ricky Stenhouse finishing up. Ty Dillon is in. There's Cole Custer, who's back on the lead lap. Uh, the commit, there is no commitment cone. That would uh, present a problem, but the commitment box is sometimes a little hard to find and then there's getting down to pit road speed. He's got the tires locked up big time getting in but there is time to be made there. Do not overstep that get caught speeding. Jamie. Chase Elliott a little bit different look this weekend so far the car has been decent had it didn't set a whole lot on the radio just four tires here. will fill them up with fuel as much as they need to make it to the next pit stop guys. All right the cars that have not stopped Christopher Bell Denny Hamlin Eric Jones. Eric Almirola, Austin Dillon, Chase Briscoe, and Todd Gilliland. Here's Briscoe on pit road. Four tires and fuel. So now, Bell, sorry, sorry, just the top six yeah. have not pitted. And what these guys are hoping for right now from a strategy standpoint, they're thinking, okay, we need a caution. We need to get a little bit further. We need to have a caution. Try to get us off sequence of the guys. Or they're thinking, okay, we're going to get to our window, which is going to be around lap 154, 155 range. We're going to pit and see if we can make hay on those guys. But then the other group's going to pit again about 175. <laughs> Twins out there the RFK cars were running in the top 10 before these stops and now they come out there 11th and 12th so they only lost a spot or two. The problem is everybody who stopped is now one lap down to the lead six cars and frantically trying to catch that lead car Christopher Bell get their lap back. Yeah you've got the 12 that's entering turn three the 20s exiting turn four he should have him probably in just another lap or two. There 
go. You can see that gap to the 20 right there. Stuck behind the 14 car. Um, and that's, that's the hard part about being on similar lap count tires as the people you're racing. It's really difficult to get by them, but they can really slow you down. Yeah, both those cars are on brand new tires. Working some lap traffic there. Now behind Blaney is Kyle Busch. And we've got some audio about the 18's last stop. When I came in the box, I tried to just do clutch and brake. I got stuck in second gear. I couldn't get it to shift during the stop, the first to leave. Okay. Wouldn't go into first gear. Really Honestly. hard to shift gears with this car when it's not moving, when it's just sitting idle. It's uh, it's kind of like being on a motorcycle. When it's just sitting there static and you got it in third gear and you're trying to get it down into first, you push it back and forth, push it back and forth. I've been in a situation like Christopher Bell is, and this is the only caveat to this that makes it challenging to call this race under this strategy. Yes, you, you are counting on a lap time you look up and and Christopher Bell's running a 25 15 you can count on all right he can run those the problem is everybody on tires keeps blowing by him taking the optimum line out now he's having to run on the outside he's two and three wide we you saw with the teammates of uh, the 14 and the 41 in front of him you can't optimize that lap time out there on those old tires you end up losing a lot more time than you thought you were going to yep. Christopher Bell out front these last 12 laps. These pit crew members are going to have a lot to say with who prevails today in Richmond. Eric Jones just pitted out a third place. Here's one of the questions in Clint's contest on the FoxBet Super 6 app. Now, most of the questions are about stage two, but which Richmond winner will have the best finish in today's race? Not at the end of stage two, but at the end of the race. All right, friends, I'm thinking you better have picked that 19 of Martin Truex Jr. That call to put him, bring him in and be the first one on pit road. Gutsy call, because that caution could come out and bite you, make you look bad, but not so much. I think these guys are the ones for that answer. 
Watch the 48 and 99 off turn two here. Whoa. Whoa. That is amazing. What a save, Daniel Suarez. Suarez Alex Bowman was even impressed. That, that was one. a caution that just didn't happen. Battling for 21st place. That happened. You see Kurt Busch back on track in the 45. Uh, Jamie, they replaced what? Everything on that car? I know they uh, replaced the ECU, replaced a whole bunch of wiring, uh, but they got him back out there. He's 107 laps down, but he continues. Let's check in with Larry and get today's subway right combination. Well, Mike, right now they're running one, two, three, and all in the top five. Joe Gibbs Racing in Richmond Raceway. When you look at their current driver lineup, Kyle, Denny, and Martin, they have a combined total of 12 Richmond wins. Even Christopher Bell, he has three Xfinity Series wins. This race one year ago, Joe Gibbs Racing led 315 of 400 laps, and all four drivers finished in the top eight. They've actually finished one, two, three in two of the last five Richmond races. I'd say this could be the subway right combination to end this 12 race winless streak for the coach and Joe Gibbs racing. Well, I'd say you could be right. Round of one, two, three right now looking good. We're fastly approaching when that 20 car should be starting to think about pitting. About that 155 range, I'm going to bet, is when you'll start to see him hit pit road. Well, there are now only three lead lap cars that have not pitted. Christopher Bell, your leader. Denny Hamblin, who has cycled up to third, and Eric Almarola in ninth. This is painful. Going back to what I was talking about, how, how he's having to manage that and, and optimizing these old tires. And, you know, you see, see that another car getting underneath of him. He can't get down. Ty Dillon going underneath of him. Can't get down in that line that he wants to run. Todd Gilliland makes a scheduled Almirola. stop. He was a lap down. And now Eric Almirola, one of the drivers I mentioned, gives up his position. But again, I want to give credit to Christopher Bell. He's doing a good job of managing that. You know, it, if you see a guy come up again, it's all about managing and optimizing that time. You know that guy's going to pass you. Let him pass you somewhere. Here comes Denny Hamlin. Hamlin in, on pit road. Christopher Bell's lap times are within a tenth of anybody in the top five. So no urgency for him to come to pit road. On pit road. However, <laughs> here he is. Jamie. And Denny Hamlin had fallen back a few positions, and that was by design. He was just taking care of those tires as long as he could, saying everything is better than it was earlier. The first stage of this race, still a little bit tight in traffic, but not bad for the 11, Regan. Christopher Bell, your leader, very happy with his race car right now. The only issues for him, a little bit of brake shake. Well, this will complete the cycle, and the first driver to make the green flag stop, Martin Truex, goes to the lead over Blaney, Kyle Busch, Logano, and Elliott. He felt it. He told us on the grid when we were down there talking with Martin Truex Jr. Well, what do you think? And he said, man, I feel like we got ourselves something today. And they made the right call on pit road. He's got a three and a half second lead right now over second place on Blaney, who had the lead before that pit stop cycle started. But we got a chance to talk to not only him, we talked to his teammate as well. Nobody, Denny Hamlin had owned this place through the course of my career, right? And. I didn't have that sense of confidence you coming out of Denny Hamlin that I heard and felt in Martin Truex and I think the Bruce in the pudding Truex knew man he he was confident in his car and their ability to take control of this race. So we've cycled all through green flag stops and we're back to 18 cars on the lead lap led by Martin Truex coming exclusively to movie theaters this Easter. Mark Wahlberg is father Stu. Here's a look at this upcoming release.
am Jesse Punch here live once again in the pits at Richmond Raceway. We've heard a lot of talk so far this race on the broadcast about tires and from down here in the pits there has been a lot of focus on tires from the crews as well. Understandably so because this is the first race we've seen so far this season with a repeat tire setup. Obviously a new tire brought with the next gen car this year from Goodyear. An 18 inch wheel. This track was instrumental in developing that tire. Richmond Raceway was the first track that Goodyear tested it out. So definitely fitting for this racetrack. Keep an eye on those tires. They are absolutely a storyline here today. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Father Stu in theaters April 13th and by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. 95 of 160 laps complete in stage two. So we've compared the 11 and the 20 as we look at today's pit performance sponsored by eBay Motors. And there's a look at the difference three tenths to the good for Christopher Bell on the driver's side and, and three tenths to the crew side. And that adds up. Bell currently 17th and Hamlin 24th. And it's in that conversation of of the sequence and how they want to do that how they approach it. It didn't seem like it worked for the 11. They didn't try it that time 20 did faster proofs in the pudding. Yeah, because what happened if you go back to that last stop right there, Christopher Bell, Adam Stevens at 20, they did it the new way. The 11 car, Chris Gabehart and the 11 crew, they went back to the old fashioned way, just a flip flop from that first trip to pit road. Sold that it's going to be the new way yet. It might be a different way, but I think uh, there's still work to be done and things to be learned about it before you see any of these. Hey, they're the only ones. Right. It isn't like every other team on pit row can't do the same thing. Well, that's the beauty of the situation that we're in right now, and, and everybody's at zero with the race cars, race car setups, driving techniques, pit crews. The way you approach a pit stop, everything is brand new. With only being a few races into the season, you're going to continue to see people taking different leaps and different angles to try to get an advantage, and they clearly think they've got one. Now, these two drivers battling were on pit road just five laps apart. Chase Elliott stopped later than Kyle Busch by just a bit, but you've seen Eric Jones passing cars at will. He was on pit road recently. Martinsville next week and then now we're just 14 days away from cup cars on dirt Bristol Motor Speedway Easter Sunday night April 17th on Fox I cannot wait to see this car and these guys do battle on that dirt something I've been looking forward to all season long some of these guys have already already been to Bristol Kyle Larson there over the last couple nights racing a dirt late model. And I know there's others as well. Everybody's trying to get some seat time and preparation for that dirt, baby. So here's Martin Truex, your leader, who was last on pit road, Larry, 48 laps ago. 
Yeah, he was the first one to pit, Mike, and I'm going to say Chad and I were talking probably within the next four to six laps, maybe no more than eight, we should see him back on pit road trying to get advantage of those new tires quickly. 19 cars on the lead lap with 57 to go in stage two. I am really impressed with the RFK cars today. They've been running well, running fast, taking opportunities when they can. Calculated both cars are running really, really well. Our Ford Cam on board Brad Keselowski. In eighth place, Chris Buescher in tenth. And here are the Penske Fords battling for second as Joey Logano pulls down on Ryan Blaney. Chase Elliott right with them and Ross Chastain and more. That nine car is pretty sporty. He hasn't had a chance to have that clean air and be up front on a restart. Chastain on pit road. Excuse up me. There. Ross Chastain pitting. So he'll be the first of the cars to make the second green flag stop in this stage. Again, that's the way to do it. You want to be the first guy to do it. The 19 following him onto pit road right now. But the advantage is going to go to the one car. Now, he may not be able to eclipse the 19, who they're doing that new pit stop choreography that we've been talking and so much about. And here comes the rest, too. And it brought everybody else down, including the nine car of Chase Elliott. Brigham. Walt Martin Drex Jr. with that race car right now started a little bit too loose this run for the long run. A small adjustment for that. Jamie. As many of them as Chad said, monkey see, monkey do. Let's come on down. The 18 of Kyle Busch and struggling with the balance a little bit on that race car. They've been adjusting like they did right there as they worked the left side. Ryan Blaney, who led 128 laps today, just an air pressure adjustment, got too tight there, was wearing out his tires. This will cycle Christopher Bell back to the lead. He pitted 22 laps ago. And just about everybody who is in uh, in pit road on this two stop cycle has now been in Regan. Well, five car Kyle Larson early on in the race was struggling in and off of the corners with that race car snapping loose. Kyle has been quiet on the radio since then though pretty happy with the five car. They didn't wait around near as long to watch no. that guy take advantage of it. As soon as he came, as soon as that one car was on pit road, everybody came that lap. Come now. And the last one to pit in this cycle will be William Byron entering pit road now. So Christopher Bell will be your leader from Denny Hamlin, Eric Jones, Eric Almarola, and Austin Dillon. Jamie. And William Byron in the 24 just really, really tight is the only feedback he's really given his team as he comes to pit road for a four tire stop. And again, we're going to be in this situation of playing the waiting game with a lot of cars now trapped one lap down because of these stops. And this is the cycle you're going to see. It's going to be interesting to see how far or where the 11, the 20, the 43, the 10, they stack up in comparison to the 19 and the rest of the guys that are going to pit twice versus their one stop pit. But you know, Mike, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm watching this new pit stop choreography. And look, I think we all see the advantages uh, of what can happen from an all out speed standpoint. But you actually mentioned something that I really hadn't taken into consideration and started to analyze a little bit more. The fueler is able to stay plugged in the whole time. Now, you mentioned that, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the facts are here, it doesn't matter, right? You're not going to worry about that here. But you fast forward to a road course, you fast forward to Indianapolis, you fast forward to Michigan. That extra gallon, half gallon, whatever it is, that's going to come into play at those racetracks is something that maybe the rest of us haven't considered quite as much. We'll see how it plays out, and we'll see how many teams adopt this newly approved strategy of having the whole crew, except the fueler, of course, come around the front of the car on stops. <laughs> 11 cars on the lead lap now, with most of the cars that stopped trapped a lap down.
Following Kevin Harvick in 12th, he is the last car on the lead lap. Nothing out back. And nothing to really worry about right now because three miles an hour faster than the leaders right there because he did the two stop strategy versus the one stop strategy. So the one stoppers at the front Bell, Hamlin, Jones, Almarola. Sixth place here. Blaney was the first of the two stoppers to make uh -oh. that second stop. <laughs> and Excuse boy. me, coming through. Yeah, Blaney carried him up the racetrack there. That might get you a little yeah, shot. Yeah, it did oh, too. Yeah. Big time. How about that? Go. Did not like that, and I'm paying him back. That is short track racing right there, buddy. Want to see this again? <laughs> this is a little payback right there. Did not like it at all. Look at, watch his hands inside the car. Woo! Thank goodness for yellow gloves. <laughs> but you know, that's Ross Jastain. He has a reputation of, I don't give a crap. I don't take any crap. I am not in the crap business. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. But man, that's a that's number one in the number two business. But they, uh, I tell you what, Blaney is the same guy, literally the same mentality, the same driver. That's two young drivers are both extremely aggressive and uh, it doesn't surprise me in the least. And I don't know that it's over. That 12 may get to the back bumper of the one again. You better run because I'm coming. Now by pitting one lap earlier than the rest of the drivers on that cycle, uh, Ross Chastain gained four spots. That's what we were saying, Mike. We were the first one to have the guts to hit pit road. You're going to get an opportunity to take advantage of that. Christopher Bell leads Denny Hamlin by 11 and a half seconds with 211 laps to go in Richmond. Hundred ninety five laps complete Christopher Bell leading here is who has made it to Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane so far this season six different drivers 
All under age 30, by the way, as have been all of the 12 most recent winners in the Cup Series. Who will join them today? A lot of differing strategies. Two stop, one stop for stage two. Christopher Bell on the one stop strategy, the leader. So is Denny Hamlin in third. And so is Eric Jones in 11th and Eric Almirola in 13th. Everybody else on the two stop strategy. Why are my driver and seven time champion crew chief arguing up here? <laughs> because I'm trying to explain to Boyer it's way more difficult than what you think as you're out there and you're trying to get your strategy to get your driver in a position where you can leapfrog some guys on track because it's really difficult to pass here you're watching the guys hit pit road you're thinking okay what is that delta how much time has elapsed where are they going to shake out and if i pit what's going to happen so if you're on there and you're trying to look at any lap time or any type of delta between where you were when you were just on track a moment ago Shit, what? five if you five th laps are you gone see how long it is for you to try to sell this point <laughs> <laughs> you have one job to do i'm out here swatting flies in this yeah. race car that you decided to not help me out the last 17 times we pitted with your strategy i told you five times it was loose getting into the corner i'm still out here swatting <laughs> flies loose into the corner. I've got people three wide out here on different strategies. That was the only job you had. Chad, that was the I got we your had, back. Like I've that. been dealing with two drivers <laughs> for the last seven years. And you know my definition of a crew chief. It's a guy that gets to travel, that makes a good living, that listens to somebody that makes millions of dollars to you. I bet everything. Do you every see this weekend. workload right here? This guy, workload right there. <laughs> Enough said. Oh, Here's on. it. Look, see, swatting flies in there. Denny, look at the focus. What do you. There isn't he even. He looks like he's out on a Sunday drive even right now. I mean, he's out there running third, cruising Crew along. Up here. Jamie Mack, you and Larry Mack back in the studio, you don't argue like this, do you? Uh, only on the weekdays. Yeah. <laughs> weekdays. <laughs> Okay. It, uh, it, it is so interesting, though, to listen to, to, the, to the drivers and crew chiefs debate that I'm obviously on Clint's side. I don't think a crew chief understands how hard you're working in the car, the struggle of maybe trying to stay on the lead lap or stay out there on old tires. And uh, here we see Cliff Daniels having a drink, a little bit of bubble gum. No problem on the pit box for him. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, you have no idea. You just have no idea. And again, no never idea. once have I just counted what you drivers do out there because it is an extremely difficult task for sure. But I do have a huge amount of sympathy for the crew chiefs at this racetrack because there's so much that happens so quick in that one span of about five to eight laps where you better make your decision. You better make the right decision because if you're the first one to hit pit road, look, Clint, and the caution comes out, you're even mad, yeah. at, mad at me about that. Right. That, that was the, you were Monday the other morning way. meeting's going to be even worse. <laughs> and, and Chad, don't don't you love the fact that the driver? It's I won the race. We ran like crap today. If you run bad, <laughs> but if we wreck, it's always you know we wreck down there in turn two. Got loose. <laughs> we we. <laughs> I love that about an interview, and I've done it so many times. You, bust your butt down and, and turn two or something. The first thing you do is get out, tell Jimmy Little on the TV that it was we wrecked down there. The only, the only guy who has it worse than the crew chief in that regard is the engine builder, because it's either we won the race or your engine blew. <laughs> yeah. There's no middle ground yeah. here. Right. Well, well, Mike Joy, I'll say this. There's a special seat in heaven for you having to deal with all this. <laughs> well, I mean, if you sit Labor back and you love, look Larry. at it right now, right? We've gotten the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr. catching the 20 at a very rapid pace, only 3.8 seconds behind them right now. And the reason they are in this position right now is because of Small. Crew Chief James Small, he is the one that made this thing happen, put them in this spot. He is, unless something odd happens, going to cruise on up there, win this stage, and go ahead and take home 10 points. 100% agree with that comment, and it, and it is true. That strategy and his willingness, that gutsy call to put him on pit road first, that's why, that's why he gets paid the big bucks, and that was a great decision to put them up front. And it all works out just fine unless we enter the spin cycle and cautions start coming out. But now things have cycled around to where we have 19 cars on the lead lap. Uh, back to Austin Dillon in 19. Austin Sindrick is in the free pass position. First car one lap down in 20th. 23 to go in this stage and all these drivers trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap and here comes the 20. Christopher Bell trying to make some room. Here comes Ricky Stenhouse way on the outside is going to pass them all. Grab a gear. And I think that's exactly what's happening Chad. 
You know, we heard when the nine car of Chase Elliott was shifting earlier, the one thing that I did notice, he downshifted and never reached over and pulled that <laughs> lever again. It's, I wasn't going to say that. And you picked up gear. on it. That's right. <laughs> And, and one quick one right here. Everybody's thinking, oh, see, this didn't play out well for the 11 car. Chastain's getting by him right now. But go ahead and go back just a little bit when we were talking at the beginning of the race about your tire allocation. Right now, the guys that are only pitting one time in this stage of the race, they're going to have one additional set of tires behind their pit box that they can use at the end of the race. So that is an advantage for them. If we get a short run, if we get a 30, 35 laps, Let's say right now there's only how many cars lead lap. We've got 18 Ooh. cars lead lap. Turn We're one see contact. That Excuse me, Christopher Bell with uh, Daniel Suarez trying to get a lap back from him. Suarez is on much fresher tires, and look what happens. Whoa, it's still going on. Yeah. Not a lot of room when you're three wide like that. They got together, but then got down into turn three and four, and same way again. Suarez washed up in three. And we're going to have a lead change right here. Martin Truex is there. Truex to the inside of Bell. On 20 lap fresher tires, Martin Truex back to the lead in traffic using that 43 of Eric Jones as a pick. New leader, Martin Truex, who had led only 17 laps in this season, entering today, goes back out front and will go Fox side by side. Going to be fun. What a fun season so far. 
Here we are at Richmond. Brad Keselowski's two cars running quite well up in uh, 11th and 12th as things cycle through here with just 10 laps to go in stage two. 11th through 13th place battle here. Martin Truex has cycled back to the lead on James Small's pit strategy ahead of his Joe Gibbs teammate. Toyota driver Christopher Bell, a Chevy is third, Ross Chastain and Fords. Penske Fords are fourth and fifth, Blaney and Logano. Still 17 cars on the lead lap. Only car out of the race, Greg Biffle. Kurt Busch was in the garage for 100 plus laps, but he's back out there. Here's third through fifth. Good little battle going on as well. So many ways to get around this racetrack. So many opportunities. It's just it's great. You see, I'm going to run the middle groove. I'm going to run the low groove. I'm going to shoot up high and see what happens up there. Really a lot of excitement. This race is great during the day. Alex Bowman has done a great job of rebounding from that pit penalty uh, at the first stage break lap 70 pitted out of the box. And he's really had to work to get back up from 28th on the restart to 14th right now 13th right now. Alex is really happy with his car yesterday. He knew he didn't have the fastest car in practice didn't qualify just how he wanted to. But you know when you talk to a driver and he looks at you and he says man my car's pretty good. I feel like it's pretty good. And if you're here and your driver has that amount of confidence he's like man I feel like I can go out there and drive and race all day long. That is a good thing because there's a lot of folks out there that are just hanging on and trying to survive the day. Yeah this is probably here more than anywhere I go. This was a track that you even though you felt good in practice again you're usually by yourself on that long run you're trying to give your crew chief a long run where he can get to cambers and make sure the air pressures and, and really get a good read on his hot rod. But from a driver's perspective it's hard to get a good gauge on what that run really felt like all the while keeping in the back of your mind. This long run in real life on Sunday when the money's on the line is going to be out there with 40 guys on different strategies trying to navigate around like you see Blaney getting to the bottom of, of Todd Gilliland and making moves. Those are all the things that you can't you know work on on Saturday or feel. So everybody in the top 15 made two stops in this stage except Christopher Bell in second place and Denny Hamlin in 14th place on the one stop three to go stage two there's a snapshot of Martin Truex's day on pit road there are the three stops the first one at the stage break and the second two stops under green and yeah. both right around 11 seconds so it, you heard me say earlier the job that I felt like Christopher Bell and that 20 car was doing of managing those old tires managing you know where to get past on fresher tires and things like that. And I think you don't have to look any further than that very fact him and his teammate both on the same cycle pretty drastic where they're running in the pecking order. You're 100 percent correct. But again let's go back to our pre race conversation with Denny Hamlin. He didn't have any confidence in his car. So maybe it's just the delta between where his car has performance and where his team is right now versus where that 20 is. But still, once again, I'm going to go back and I got to reinforce this. He's got an extra set of tires. Yeah. And that's going to help them at the end of this race if we start to get some rapid cautions. Final lap of stage two, which runs caution free. And Toyota takes stage two. Martin Truex on a two stop strategy, Christopher Bell on a one stop. It's Truex's fifth stage win at Richmond, tied for the most ever.
Saturday, one of the most famous rivalries in the history of sport in America. Red Sox, Yankees, baseball back on FS1. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, FS1 and the Fox Sports app is where you'll find Major League Baseball. At Richmond, you'll find us at the end of stage two with 167 laps to go. Martin Truex on a two-stop strategy leading. Christopher Bell on a one-stop strategy in second and with an extra set of tires for this final run of 170 laps to the checkered flag. Two Toyotas led Ross Chastain Chevy, Logano and Blaney in Fords to the check or to the green and white checkers. Then Elliott, Harvick, Kyle Busch, Larson, and Keselowski all receiving stage points. And you mentioned Keselowski. Let's watch us right here because he's only a little bit behind where the 19 is, but they're pitted in front of the 19. So let's see if 19 has any trouble getting off a of pit road with that six car right in front of him. Let's find out. Regan. Well, Ross Chastain, the one car struggling right now to keep the rear tires on that race car. Maybe he's spinning them too much. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., they adjusted on that last run to tighten them up just a little bit. Slightly too far with that race car. And the 20 of Christopher Bell, loose with that race car. Needs a little more lateral grip. Jamie? Well, they were going in the right direction with the nine, but this time Chase Elliott fired off too tight, and then he abused his rear tires too much to be able to keep up with the rest of them. The 12 of Ryan Blaney frustrated with Ross Chastain there and used up his tires too much. They said, you need to start earlier in the run. Take care of those tires. It was four here in an air pressure adjustment. Ram race off pit road shows the front four holding station. Kyle Busch picking up three as Truex gets a good stop. And to your question, Chad, Brad Keselowski stopped deep in his pit box because he had an empty box in front of him. No conflict there. Yep. Great. Guys, let's get to the 19, the stage two winner. Martin Truex Jr. is boarding the boys up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you, Boyer. Man, how about that strategy? Old James Small got you in first, got you out. Strategy's on point. You're holding a pretty wheel out there. Tell me what you have. Yeah, auto owners, uh, Camry's been pretty good, obviously. Uh, pretty difficult to pass out there, so strategy and track position's huge. So James nailed that one. Awesome job by him. And now uh, we got track position for the uh, final, final stage here, so. We'll do our best to keep our balance where it needs to be and uh, hang on to this lead. Well, man, when we talked to you before the race, you had the confidence. You wasn't lying to us. Fast car, doing a good job, man. Keep it up and good luck. Yeah, I appreciate it. I would never lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Truex Jr. has won three of the last five races at Richmond.
Here's the three quarter mile Richmond Raceway from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Anything can happen as long as you have the drive. Goodyear, more driven. Two stages complete, 170 lap stage three to go. So we've seen how the different strategies uh, play out as far as one stop or two stop. Clint, what do you want on this final stage? I'm just going to listen to Chad. I, I, <laughs> oh. Hey, at the end of the day, James Smalls, we saw in all kidding aside, him beating everybody, making the bold call to bring his car in, being the first one to do that, put him mm -hmm. ahead. He was the one that could take off on those tires, utilize them, and that call ended up winning that stage. And I I knew position. it. I knew it was going to be exciting. I Look saw this. it. I saw it in the cars. See this, folks? This is all of his <laughs> notes on strategy and everything else. The only note I needed is this one right here. You see that? That's exactly what happened last time, and I think that's what's going to happen again. I think you come into this final stage, you're going to see a, a similar set of circumstances, a little bit longer stage, right? So right. you got to be a little bit smart about how you attack that. But one thing about this third stage, the last five years, we've had a caution right after the start. So it'll be interesting oh, what happens oh. as we roll into this next stage. After this restart for yep, stage right three. It would be here. Calling your shot. Let's see. Well. Here they come to the Geico restart zone for stage three. Truex, Bell, teammates on the front row. Good launch here. Good about one in here. Now's the time to try to make some hay. Whoa, Now's look at all this three wide right in the middle of the pack. Crunch zone. Four, Four wide. Four wide. I think that's red. Yes, it is. And the eight car that dipped down on the front uh, straightaway got them in there in three and four wide because of his move. See the 18 of Kyle Busch leaning on the 12. Now we're starting to see some racing. That action heating up. Could be that caution you were talking about, Chad. Joey Logano goes after second. They're three wide in the back. Six cars under a blanket. And here comes Bell nice. and Logano for second. Still don't have it sorted out back there. Oh. Austin Sindrick, one of those stuck in the middle. Oh, oh. Just Austin. about had it off a of turn four Bubba there. Austin Sindrick get into one another. But we stay green. Eight cars under a blanket down in that pack back there as we get this great battle for second. And up the hill goes Chastain. He had a little help from Blaney as Kyle Busch and Blaney move ahead of Chastain. That's for Ford. That's not the first time we've seen action out of those two today. Probably won't be the last. I don't think so. Harvick right in the middle of it. In sixth place now. That's Boyer's pick from earlier today. He had a lot of confidence on that old four car and where they were going to run. Chastain comes back on the bottom. Yeah. Chase Elliott following him. It's interesting you said that, and I looked over my shoulder to see how the SHR boys were, and I don't have that confidence as much as I did at the beginning of the eight race as what I saw from Saturday. His teammates are struggling even more so than him. There's a Blaney getting into the one car. This still isn't done. Now let's go back to the first time those two met on the track and listen to some audio. I'm going to three to the much longer, so I don't have to worry about that. Copy. There's a piece of I can be smart. He thinks he can do anything he wants. Understood. <laughs> Ryan Blaney. Oh, turn two in the wall. Is that Keselowski or no. 51 oh, car? Me. Cody Ware, this happened way at the back as they were still battling two and three wide. Uh, well, Chad, I'm, we're <laughs> only a few laps into this stage. Here's the caution. Chad, uh, Clint, that's what all those notes are for. Chad, <laughs> Chad we could have been some together, man. You I'm think telling we'd, you right you now. You think we'd have made magic right there, buddy? Yes. <laughs> I tell you, there's all these purple cars this week. With Brad and his teammate Chris Busher having literally the exact same. See some damage on the inside of Stenhouse here. I wasn't sure who Cody Ware got together with, but we saw the outcome. And you'll see it here out the front of Kurt Bush's Monster Energy on board. Thanks for getting back out there, Kurt, providing us with that awesome Whoa. footage. Who is that right there? That's the 43, 43 of, Eric Jones. of Eric Jones. Looked like he got pretty sideways off the front bumper, the 43. And uh, Ricky Stenhouse. Got some of that also. Without Stenhouse there, he would have been in the outside wall really hard. <clears throat> Only the Let's second up. caution for cause today. The first one was Kurt Busch, who had no fuel pressure and stopped on the back straightaway. But that's the first caution for contact here. And now it's a question of Larry Mack. What will you do? 
Yeah, we've run five green flag laps. I think if you're up there near the front, you you probably stay out here. We've only got 19 cars on the lead lap. If you're back there outside the top 10, you know what? Smoke them if you got them. Come on in and get four more. <laughs> okay. Well, we saw that in stage one. We saw an early caution there, and guys came down pit road and put their scuffs on. We'll see if anybody bites right now. Pit road is open, and Denny Hamlin is going to lead a few of them on to pit road. Chris Busher comes in with Hamlin, and so does William Byron. Jamie? Well, Denny Hamlin, one of those that was only on a three stop strategy. So that means they have that extra set. So why not? And Larry Mack just said, if you're outside the top 10, why not come? Well, the 11 was 11. So they decided to put on a fresh set of sticker tires there. Car right now, pretty decent for Denny Hamlin. Daniel Suarez Five also came. As we're under caution at lap 247 of 400 in Richmond. One to go to the restart green. Let's see how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring today. Joey Logano, runner-up on the outside for this restart at the front row. Denny Hamlin, 15th. Daniel Suarez, 18th. Austin Dillon, 19th. All right in the pack there. And all on the lead lap. Back to Chase Briscoe in 20th, who got the free pass. Now, Clint Stage 2 contest has one question that errors in Stage 3. And that is which of six past winners here will have the best finish. And 138 of you are still alive for a shot of that $10,000 on the Fox Bet Super 6 app. Good luck. 138 people still in the still in the game, baby. Truex Logano, Toyota Ford on the front row. Two Toyotas row two, Bell and Kyle Busch. Then Blaney and Harvick. Here we go back to green. Three wide bottom and that was Chastain and he stole a spot or two. Still three wide right behind him. Brad Kay in the middle. 
with Chase Elliott on the outside and Bowman on the bottom. Bowman sneaking back up into the mix here. We said that earlier in the day that he was going to be a guy that was going to be a late charger to be able to get up towards the front. And there he is underneath the one car of Chastain. Cole Custer made a three wide pass on the outside. Now things start to sort out. You could have slid a piece of paper in between the <laughs> one of Chastain before Kevin Harvick off the of two. Now it's Blaney and Harvick fighting for fifth. And behind them, Chastain and Elliott. One thing we haven't talked about today at all is the fact that traffic really impairs your ability to to progress. What ends up happening is you can have a faster car than that guy in front of you, but this track is so aero sensitive and it's so difficult to get a run on somebody that you can end up running the exact same speed as somebody ahead of you that's running slower and you can't do anything about it. You just get stuck. And behind them, Hamlin and Bowman are coming. Oh, yeah. I remember it's so, so funny you said that. One of my last memories of this place, I thought I had it won. I think everybody did. I got, I was lights out fast that night, got to Truex, running down just easy peasy, running down three tenths a lap faster, get to. Oh, trouble off turn two. Cindric. Austin Sindrick Cindric. goes around. Off, I believe, the front bumper of Cole Custer. They were three wide battling for a spot. As soon as I got, you know, to him, matched his speed, I couldn't do anything with him. It's a tough Literally fight. got trapped in that bubble, and, and it's so important when you catch them, you have to pounce on it now, yep. or that opportunity's gone. Here's your replay on this. Oh, I just see a bad angle coming. Looks like, well, yeah. oh, I think oh, Ty Dillon gets in the 41. Will the tie get in the 41 or the 41 get in the tie? 41 came down a little as well. Nonetheless, those two are the ones that got together. They could say we Cindric, crashed. Cindric was was the outcome of them two getting together. So impressed with the toughness of this race car. He, he didn't hit that hard, man. But still, last year with that car, you'd have had tremendous amounts of damage. This thing, no, she ain't so bad at all. Well, let's listen to Austin Cindric's team here. So now what happens? You just said one more caution and it really throws this race haywire. Now we had it. Was there enough laps ran right there? That's the key right there. I don't know that we ran enough laps, but one of the cars that hit pit road when we were out there was the 11. Where's the 11 running right now? Seventh position and he's got newer tires than everybody else. So these guys up front took notice of that. Right now, I think they hold serve, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, because we keep going with these cautions. We're working it into a two stop race and here they come feeding time. All of them. Larry Mack, we were, I was wrong. Come on, Regan, what do you got? Well, Martin Truex Jr. with the 19 car, struggling with the brakes on that car right now. Every time they cool off, they shake too much for them. Not a lot they can do for that right now from the crew chief, though. The 22 car fired off too tight. Joey Logano having a good run right now, though, and the 20 of Christopher Bell. Same issue as his teammate. The brakes are shaking on that race car. Jamie? And the 18 of Kyle Busch as they work the left side there. Just a little bit tight for him. Car hasn't been terrible, kind of. Both ends of the spectrum, tight and loose. The four, Kevin Harvick in. Best start of the year of seventh. They've made minor adjustments to that four to try to get it to the Viking, Mike. Trouble on Joey Logano. It looked like they were going to jack up the rear of the car. Uh, the left side is still up. It's like he can't get the left side up, so they use a the jack under the rear to get it up high enough. Oh, a jack post broke or something, Chad? Or did... Very possibly. Contact. We saw that happen last week with one of our race cars, and we couldn't get the jack in the oh. car because the jack post broke. Ah, oh. uh, running second. Well, Logano pulls away. As we are under caution, three cars getting together off turn two.
Easter Sunday night on Fox. What happens when these cup cars meet 20,000 truckloads of dirt? Chaos under the lights. The NASCAR Bristol Dirt Race, Easter Sunday night, 7 Eastern on Fox, and the Fox Sports app after Martinsville and before Talladega. Coming green, William Byron up front with Daniel Suarez. They and Austin Dillon did not pit. They are the leaders. Big tire lock up on the eight about mid pack. Getting into turn one. There was no free pass on that caution. Ty Dillon was in the free pass position, but of course he was involved in the caution. We see three wide back there with the 22 on the outside. He had trouble on pit road. Logano trying to dig himself back out of this. Have to go where they don't. If you need to make some time up, they're double wide, Chad. Bold move going to the outside up. three and wide. And we knew this was going to happen. We saw it in the cards. You got 135 laps to go this time by. Everybody understands that you have got to be aggressive. Bell charging on the inside for three wide and <laughs> thought better of it. Uh, Austin Dillon came down and closed up that opportunity. Whoa, so close. Seven, you still inside. Denny Hamlin outside of that group. It's a great yeah, shot of the diffuser clear, underneath these clear, cars. So much downforce is made on the air, utilizing the air underneath the car now. Fourth, fifth place Hamlin going after Blaney for fourth. They are on the same tire schedule right now. The 24 and the 19, or, or 24 and the 99 up there at the front are on the old tires. 99 getting passed by the 19. And Truex back up to second place. And I think Truex wants to go right here. You need to take off and hide because I believe there's the one car that can hold your lap times with you is that 12 car Ryan Blaney and he's right behind him. One car in between him is Suarez. Keslowski way up the track in turn four hauled it back in. You're riding with him right behind Alex Bowman. Keslowski 13th. But he missed turn uh, three and four that last time around. Took the long way. Blaney underneath Suarez. It's like I was talking about. I, I really believe, you know, obviously from qualifying on the pole and everything else, that 12 car, Ryan Blaney, has the speed in his race car. Didn't quite do as good a job of strategy. I remember it, Suarez has 10 more laps on his tires than the people he's racing with. Now Joey Logano had those issues on pit road. He restarted 18th and he's gained two spots. But Regan, what was the problem? Well, Mike, as you said, the car, saw the car sitting there. The jack actually locked up. They could not get the car down off of the jack. That was the issue. They've had to swap that out for another jack. Tough break for Joey, who had quietly worked his way up to second and had a solid day going out. Got a long way to go now from 16th. And heavy traffic ahead. Jamie, how about our new leader, William Byron? Yes, William Byron leading his first laps ever at Richmond in his eighth start. And I talked to his crew chief, Rudy Fugel. He said this driver is so amazing. You know, this was kind of his weakness on short tracks, but he has gone out. He's racing late model races whenever he can. He's working on his craft as a race car driver on short tracks. Learning how to take what the car can give you, not overdriving it. And that's kind of what we've seen in this race so far. And Chad, what have you seen out of this young driver and his progress? I've seen an awful lot of success out of that 24 team since I got away from it. I can tell you that. They've done an amazing job and really proud of Rudy. Uh, ever since Rudy stepped in and I stepped away from uh, crew chief on that car, they've run well, they've won races, they've run up front, they've led a bunch of laps. So really proud of that 24 team. Really cool to have Liberty University on the side of that car while we're up here in Virginia as well. And I think this is exactly kind of plays into what I was trying to explain about myself and Truex 
Truex caught him. He was way faster than him, caught right to the back bumper of that 24. And now you look down, not only is he not matching his times, he was a tenth off of uh, a lap up, up of the 24. So you kind of get to that bubble, and if you don't capitalize on that opportunity, now you kind of find yourself stuck in a little bit of a bubble, if you will, until you start getting into lap traffic, and then you can work on an angle and try to pick him on a lapper. That's exactly what we spoke about just a moment ago, 100%. What is there, five, six green flag laps between tires on those cars? And we know the 19's been super fast all day long, and he's going to continue to wrap the bottom, wait for William to get to where his tires are falling apart a little bit. But man, that 22 is trying to cruise up through the field right now as he's trying to get back up towards the front, all the way back up to the 11 already. He sure is. 11 just made the pass on 12 of Blaney. So Hamlin to third. Let's look at our Xfinity fastest laps of the day. Now, this is the last lap. William Byron a 71, Truex a 72. Kevin Harvick, Christopher Bell right there, and Denny Hamlin among the fast five. Yeah, and you last go back, around. excuse me, you go back uh, three or four laps before that, and Truex had about a half, a, a tenth and a half to two tenths. He was faster than William Byron. Got to him, can't do anything with him. Looks like the nose is starting to push a little bit, getting tight behind him in the wake of that car. He's going to wait for lappers. Save them tires. There'll be another opportunity coming. First time William Byron has led here. And is this part of the Kyle Larson culture at Hendrick Motorsports? In comes Kyle, who rate what races, what, 100 races a year, you know, outside of the Cup Series. And now you have all the Hendrick drivers doing this, but that was not the norm. Uh, Hendrick drivers raced the Cup Series. They didn't even race on Saturday at the Cup tracks. <laughs> it was really funny. We really discouraged it there for a long period of time because, yeah. but it's a different time. When we had Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, and the Dale Earnhardt Jr., we were at the racetrack on track three days a week, and it was a different cadence. We would come in on Friday, you would have a practice session, then you would qualify. You'd have two practice sessions on Saturday, then you would go run a race. So that meant that you know we encouraged our guys to make sure they got some time away and rested Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, travel day, Thursday. And, and that was the deal. Now, post-pandemic, it's a different set of circumstances. Last year, Nobody was ever on the racetrack except for the day that you really raced. So we need and encourage these guys to get on track now. And I think Kyle Larson has definitely been the guy that has pushed this out there because we've seen it not only with our guys in Hendrick Motorsports, we've seen a lot of guys, they go and they race anything, quarter midgets, uh, the, that little dirt track that everybody goes to, uh, Millbridge. Millbridge. A lot of guys yeah. go up there and they race all through there. So it's, it's I, definitely the trend. I think you can see that and about any driver out there including myself when I was racing the Xfinity series you know in 08 and won the championship over there and racing the cup I would just like you said I was practicing double time on a weekends racing that series racing trucks when I could racing whatever I could that seat time was so much of a, my advantage look at Kyle Busch and when he used to run Xfinity trucks everything else that was looking back on it all when he was dominating everything Kyle Larson goes and races all over the country, comes back, wins him a championship. William Byron is leading, but Martin Truex is coming.
111 laps to go in Richmond. William Byron Chevrolet leading two, uh, three Toyotas and a Ford. Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. I'll tell you who I'm watching is that 11 car, Danny Hamlin. We talked to him for the race. Didn't necessarily love what I heard of confidence wise. Didn't hear that, didn't feel that with Danny, but I'm telling you, behind the wheel, whole different scenario. Top three run. He won every stage last year. He's won here three times. I think Danny Hamlin's a guy. Well, Clint, I'm watching six-time Richmond winner Kyle Busch comes in here with a 23-race winless streak, and he has had a rough couple of weeks at Atlanta and Coda. He just keeps hanging out in that top five. But remember, at least one more pit stop to go. I think you have to pay attention to the leader of this race right now, which is the 24, but I'm going to go all the way back to earlier in the week when I was on race up and I called it the 19 car. Won three of the last five races here. That's going to be the car you got to pay attention to. Clean on pit road, a great driver, runner on the bottom. I think he's the one you got to pay attention to today. Well, Ryan Blaney in the 12 started this race on the pole. He's led the most laps today. This has been a terrible track for Blaney. He's in that seat. He's fired up. His car is good. My money's on the 12. I am keeping an eye on Kevin Harvick, not because he's been top 10 in nine of the last 11 races here. He's not here to finish in the top 10. Harvick is a three-time Richmond winner, and so far this year, it's been young guys rule, old guys drool, but I think one of those older guys, Harvick or Truex, is going to prevail this afternoon. And that is today's Credit One Bank One Store. Hey, I didn't know it was uh, either or one to watch. <laughs> you took two. Both of my counterparts up here when, took two. Boot, what, my no, no, no. When you I have just... to pick last, <laughs> you take liberty. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Boy, we're going to take advantage of the opportunity to alter our choices whenever we can just to make sure we hedge properly <laughs> hey that's another big maybe just like yeah you there's said, a lot of maybes this weekend and that's what i love about what this car in this season has brought to the table to the forefront for nascar all those guarantees you know when you try to strategize this race in our tuesday morning meetings it's out the window because it truly is anybody's race to win you put them out front with good strategy like we saw with james small and true x or with william Byron in the 24 the 12 of uh, ryan blaney that's never run good here different game the game has changed boy it has and there's another little twist right here we've got the 17 car on pit road running very good all day long I personally think this may be a little bit early to try to start your pit cycle, but man, in the game of maybe that we've had here today, who knows what's going to shake out. Uh, he he could be the guy to dip his toe in the water first and bring everybody down pit road. He was a lead lap car uh, running two spots behind his teammate Brad Keselowski, who is 16. So essentially what you're telling me is they're He's hoping that we're going to see another caution, right? You're going to gain the track position here, probably hopefully see another one with that strategy, and that will benefit him. I think that's the option where he's going to go and try to double uh, yeah. double pit this, this deal for three stints, or he's hoping that he's going to drag everybody else down pit road, and he's the first guy to pit, and he gets a little bit of a leapfrog on him that way. What a great race this has turned out to be. Yeah, Chad, I felt like if you're going to split this into thirds, that was maybe about eight to ten laps early. I th felt like you needed to go to at least about lap 305. Now, if you're going to split it in half, you and I are talking during commercial break, you're going to go up to about lap 330, somewhere in that neighborhood. We're coming to that magic number of 100 laps to go, which seems to me like a good time for uh, NASCAR on Fox. Crank it up. With who, Jamie? Sorry, who?
are about 40, so whenever you want to tell. Five to go. We listened in on Christopher Bell, who restarted fifth and is currently running seventh, seven seconds off the lead. Coming to you at all. We gotta make a decision on what stopper do pretty quick. Oh, it's not coming to me. That thing's been loose. Usually it'll come to you on a long run. It is not coming to me. Make some adjustments. I need tightened up, Chad. Sounds to me like he's gonna go ahead and do a do stop. Jamie? Well, Mike, I'm looking at the top 10, and I see all four JGR cars in the top seven. Now, Toyota hasn't won a race yet this year. So as a camp, they came here with four different setups. And so far, it's been pretty good. I've been watching the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Tire fall off has been a little too aggressive for their liking, but their strategy has been good. And remember, Denny Hamlin, for the first time in his career, no top 10s in the first six races. He needs a good finish here today. Sure does. Eric Almarola has pitted, so has A.J. Allmendinger in the 16. And here comes is this Harvick coming to pit road. Yeah, we're starting to get some activity here on pit road. And I told him myself and crank it up. It's the hardest thing for me to do, not talk on this thing. And I heard it <laughs> coming in eight. And I'm like, oh, I heard it. And here they come, folks. Jamie. We're riding on board with Chase Elliott right now as he gets the count down the four. Kevin Harvick is in, who's way too tight. Chase Elliott, though, he's just saying, I don't know what happened to this thing. His balance is completely gone. They were kind of getting their arms wrapped around it, so it swung to the opposite side now in the nine. Christopher Bell is in, so is Austin Dillon. Uh, rookie Harrison Burton's had a good race today. He's in as well. Regan. Mike, you heard the radio on Christopher Bell. That car was not coming in for him. No forward drive off the corners, but too tight in the middle. It would not turn the middle for him. And Denny Hamlin comes to pit road. Justin Haley also. Jamie. And Denny Hamlin comes into his pit box, a three-time winner here, but hasn't won here since 2016. They had that extra set of tires. They use those up as they work on the left side. No adjustments there for the 11. Brad Kozlowski on pit road, and here comes William Byron. Kozlowski's stop complete. Same for Tyler Reddick. Jamie. And William Byron led 51 laps in this race already. Like the clean air for this number 24 as they work the left side. No adjustments. Pretty happy with it the way it's rolling here in this final stage. Penalty for Corey LaJoy. Too fast entering pit road. Ty Dillon is in. And this is really interesting right now. I think we're sitting, we're watching this strategy evolve. The 24, all of these guys have pitted. The 19 still on the racetrack right now. He is committed, I have to say, from this point to do this in one stop as opposed to two stops for the rest of the race. What's right. interesting, isn't that exactly opposite of yeah. what got him the lead in, that, in the, the second stage yeah. win? But I think it was because of those two quick cautions when they came in there and got those tires and that short and that stage right there. He's going to have to go about another 15 to 20 laps. Landon Castle, Bubba Wallace, B.J. McLeod on pit road. So now, well, I like it though. His poker face is good. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that. I, the 19, if all holds true the way it is right now, about 15 more laps, I think, before they hit pit road. So the top 10 were all on pit road at lap 259, except fifth place Daniel Suarez, who was there 10 laps earlier. 86 laps to go in Richmond and the Toyota Owners 400. 
as we take you Fox side by side. We're back, and Ryan Blaney locks up the brakes in turn three and dives to pit road. Looked like uh, that was kind of unplanned and pretty sudden, was it? Yeah, that didn't seem quite. How's this? And anything that I've got in front of me, and Larry Max has been coaching me through this race, I don't see where that's. this is going to be a huge benefit. But it's going to be interesting here. Jamie, what have you got down there on the 12th? Well, as they count Blaney down into his pit box, you know, with pit road, you guys have talked about it. They've had their issues this year, and it's been different things. Fueling has been one of the main issues. They've been working on that, a fuel pickup issue. They're working the left side, but the team has done a pretty nice job here today so far in that number one pit box. Regan? Well, Kyle Larson, just a steady day for him right now. They've been battling loose in with that race car the majority of the day right now. Four tires is the call for them. And here comes Truex to pit road. So did they force his hand when I they pitted so. early? I, that he wanted to go. You said 15 more laps. That's like lap 330. I feel like that seven, eight, nine, ten laps early forced his hand, and he had to pit. Yeah, he would have been left behind if he hadn't done that. So that's that's really an interesting play right there. Larson, Briscoe, Chastain, and Kyle Busch are all in, Larry. Yeah, I think what Chad said earlier, when Blaney, when they laid the gauntlet, Jonathan Hassler, they were the first one. They wanted to jump on it first, and then I think that forced everybody else's hand, including the 19 car and James Small with Truex. So now only Alex Bowman among the lead lap cars, third place, and still overcoming that pit road penalty early in the day. He's the only one who's not been to pit road among the lead lap car in all of our meetings in preparation for this race Chad I listened to you and the one thing that you told me is to be the first one when we're going to pit be the first one to do it because you're going to reap the benefits not only on that stop you're going to have the first one on tires to be able to get through the tra uh, traffic better huh I'm listening to you buddy and I like that strategy of the 12 car and Ryan Blaney being the first one to lay that gauntlet down like Larry said here's Alex Bowman to pit road the last lead lap car to pit 
Bubba Wallace had to make a second stop because the right rear was loose on oh. his first stop. He got around, got back to pit road without incident and changed it. <laughs> he already has somebody on, on a four-week uh, vacation. He don't need another one. Well, and I he's bet you they came in and said, hey, nip that in the bud right now. And he's one of the, like, we'll, we'll call him fortunate. He's actually felt what a loose wheel feels like on one of these race cars. So he has some experience with that. So he probably felt what he had last week, which he was thinking was a, a flat spot of tire. And why he stayed on a racetrack. William Byron out front by 1.6 seconds. We're running this out. Keep being perfect, bud. Both ends. Being perfect, not slipping them. Inch it away. Last lap by Byron was a tenth quicker than Denny Hamlin, and half a tenth quicker than third place Kevin Harvick. And all of which are on the same pit schedule at this point in time. So the car with the freshest tires is Martin Truex in sixth place. You see he pitted just five laps ago, Blaney just seven laps ago. Let's see if they can make any inroads into that front five. Well, he's running right now, Martin Truex is running around at about a 2340 second lap. And you go up and you look at William Byron, he's running the 24 flats to 2390s. So he's gaining an awful lot of time on them. So that's where this whole flip flop of when you pit once versus when you pit twice is going to come into play. Sixty nine laps to go as Ricky Stenhouse makes a pit stop Stenhouse two laps down in twenty fourth. Still can't get used to the fire coming out of the left sides of these race cars when they lift. Having them pipes come out both sides definitely shorter pipes too. a lot more flame. Watch the 14 here. Oh. oh. That's quite a bit of contact. That was looked uh, like the 99 of Suarez and the 14 first got into it. He tried to give him some room, drove right in the, the door of the 15. J.J. Ailey there Ailey. was collateral damage. Slicing and dicing, baby. It's go time. Bay window is officially open. <laughs> now, because of this long green run, Ross Chastain is the first car one lap down in 15th. Battling there with second place Hamlin and with Chase Briscoe, who is now the first car one lap down. Michael McDowell has been off the leader's pit stop cycle all day, and he makes a stop. Tenth place, Blaney and Kyle Busch. Who I think both thought they might be fighting for the lead today. Blaney uh, has been out front for 128 laps early. Yeah, he thought stage one, boy, this is smooth sailing. This is going to be a nice race for us today. Ever since he started to get back in traffic a little bit, he has been in a dogfight, what seems to be just about every lap. Now, that could have been with Ross Chastain or Kyle Busch. Who knows? But he has been fighting tooth and nail ever since he got back yeah, in traffic. Yeah, something's falling back on here because now here he is, fell back clear to the the reach of, of the five making the pass to the outside of him and Kyle Larson. Ninth place. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott. All right, back to the issue of uh, shifting. Regan. Well, Mike, we talked about shifting earlier in the day, and we knew that it was going to evolve as the day went on. Tyler Reddick from his crew chief, take a listen to what they just told him about what guys are doing. Sound shifting in the middle of one and two and running fourth all the way from the center of one and two back to the start finish line. And then they shift to fifth at the start finish line? Yeah, so they're just in fifth here from the start finish line to the center of one and two. Yeah, and that's how I heard that earlier. You heard him. Uh, shift in the nine car when we were following along with him riding along and then all of a sudden I was like wait a minute he never shifted back in to fifth so pretty much riding fourth gear for the better part of a lap. Chase Elliott grabbing a gear there. Downshift. 
All right, see, didn't ship down the back straightaway. Still in fourth gear. Going to roll through three and four. Three wide. Kyle Larson threads the needle <laughs> between Reddick and Busher. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. <laughs> He's rolling. That battle was for eighth place, all three of them. Sixty laps ago, we're going to take you side by side once more. William Byron leading Denny Hamlin by 4.6 seconds. Welcome back to Richmond where our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear for those that push the limits of possibility Goodyear more driven. 53 laps to go William Byron 4.2 seconds up on Denny Hamlin. Kevin Harvick five seconds back. And there's a little piece of something on the grill there. So we're gonna have to come down pit lane. Oh, and NASCAR has wow. posted the 18 for that small piece of green and red tape. Looks like it might have been attached to a windshield tear off. Wow. Might not even have been there. No. But somehow, there I would say it goes back. They have cameras on pit road that'll show whether or not that was put on or not. I mean, that piece right there definitely is debris. We, I think we just heard the crew chief say we put a piece of tape on the grill we weren't supposed to. Larry. All right, it is illegal to put tape on the grill opening. I've talked to NASCAR. Yes, he's being black flagged. They feel like they meant to put it over the brake duct. Remember, we've been hearing all this talk about brake shake. They meant to put it over the brake duct and got it over the grill opening. Can't do that. No, you so sure you can, can't. Right, so like Larry's saying, you yeah, can put you some put tape on, on the brakes, brakes, but you can't put it on the grill. What a costly air. Now it'll be two weeks in a row. He had a great run going last week in a top five and spun out on the last lap. He is not going to be happy about this. 
That's a costly error. And it's only about four inches over from where that brake duct opening would be. They just missed it by that much. I'm going to stick up with the guy a little bit here. When you watch those guys and how fast they reach up there and try to put uh, tape on before he drops the clutch on that thing and takes off, I mean, it's like boom, boom, so fast. Could this be a product of that new choreography? Jamie? Thank and you see it right there. They just pulled the tape right off the grill of the 18. A lot of confusion. You can see the looks of the pit crew guys like, what happened? What did we do wrong? But they pulled it off. He's gone. Austin Dillon is pitting, and so is Eric Almirola. Uh, and more. Kevin Harvick is back in. So now and this, here comes Christopher Bell. And this is something that happens. Okay, so the 18 comes down pit road, and everybody's like, oh, maybe we're supposed to be pitting right now. And everybody comes down pit road with them. That very easily could be what's happening right now. Regan. This has been the plan all along for the 20 car. Christopher Bell, they were going to pit on this lap exactly. Counted it down from 10 laps ago until now. He's silent on the radio in that car. Jamie? I'm bored with Kevin Harvick right there. Plowing tight is what he said. He's been pretty much tight all race long, but they made their final stop of the day as Denny Hamlin in for his service as well. Harrison Burton is in. Justin Haley in and out. Landon Castle all under green. We've had more green flag pit stops today than I think we've had in the whole season to date. The biggest thing about these pit stops, yes, there are green flag pit stops that we haven't seen, but man, one thing that we haven't seen today that we've been seeing all year is mistakes within these pit stops. Whoa, that's as close as it gets. Oh. There was a lot of things happening. Don't speed on pit road, but you have to have all four underneath that orange box. Again, a violation, a pit uh, entry violation. We see that almost every time we come here. Somebody has their left sides on that box. Get snapped for it. Now, as this pit stop, this part of the pit stop cycle uh, concludes, Chad, let's explain why NASCAR no longer allows tape on the grill with this new car. So the way that the cars are aero matched, I don't want to say matched, that's not the proper word, but aero categorized by NASCAR is with a certain velocity ratio of air going through the grill. Okay, so that's how much air is going through that grill. And that keeps the downforce levels very consistent throughout the manufacturers. So they don't want the teams to be able to do that. Now, all that being said, if you're in a situation to where you want to increase your water temperature, what you can do is there's a plate on the back side of the radiator that you can restrict the airflow from that side of the radiator, but you can only do that before the race begins or before the weekend begins, not during the event. Yeah, you're lying in the bed you made if you do that. Yeah. It, it, and we saw that at, at uh, California with these Gibbs cars. They had that plate blocked off somewhat, had overheating issues. The rest was history. All of them struggled with it. Martin Truex is coming. But Larry, that inability to use tape, didn't that take away a pretty important uh, tool in your toolbox? Well, it did, Mike, but again, to Chad's point, it's just the way the car is structured and, uh, you know, the, the air does not go under the hood anymore. It goes through the radiator, out those louvers in the hood, and then there's some that's fed actually to the air cleaner where the throttle body's at. Martin Truex is marching forward. He's about two tenths of a second per lap faster than William Byron right now. Jamie? Well, Kyle Busch now, he's the lap down in 14. Ben Bayshore, his crew chief, came on the radio and told Kyle, we added that tape 200 laps ago, and they just called it. So you can imagine the driver not so happy. Wow. Interesting thing building up here. Is the 24 going to go for it? They were all last on pit road. What are you asking me, for, Chad? I'm the driver. I'm the 24 out there trying to just hold on. You're supposed to tell me, <laughs> do I need to save these things? Are we going to the end? Are we going to pit? Well, strategist, I need help. What do you want me to do inside this race car? How can I help you? Chad, you would think if they were going to stop, they were, yeah. would have already made that stop. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree, Larry Mack. It's, it's, it looks to me like it's folding up to where they're going to go ahead and try and keep this thing going. But I think they might be a bit of a sitting duck, though, unfortunately, but we're going to have to see a four and a half second lead. 
Yes, because Martin Truex last lap is four tenths faster than William Byron, and he is on a march. Well, yeah. and it goes back into the job that he does trying to manage these runs. You're out there on old tires. Everybody else has fresh tires. So literally every lap you're getting passed by two or three times and losing even more time than you would if you could just run a, a clean lap. Thought so. Look, look, at, look at that. This. Yeah. So we've only had five green flag pit stops in the first six races, which we've gone combined. to a lot of racetracks combined that you would have inherently inevitably thought you would see that Chicago or uh, Fontana, California, Las Vegas, tracks like that, which would breed that. Um, and then today we've had four on one of our most difficult short tracks that we go to. Truex is now within four seconds of the lead. William got loose getting into the corner on the outside of the 11 but again that goes into what I was saying it's one thing to do the math and see if it works if he can just run solid clean laps as if nobody else is out there but when you have the 11 of Denny Hamlin get underneath of you get loose in there's another half second off that that you were not counting on. Regan. Mike Martin Truex Jr. continuing to reel in the 24 William Byron just came on the radio though and said my tires are shot already so not happy with the tires on that car right now. Well he's got 13 less laps on them than William Byron has on his. But again this lap Truex four tenths faster than Byron. Yeah and, and that'll again, take a toll. Just like Clint was saying Martin does such a good job of just taking care of his tires running right down the rod and bottom of the racetrack. He does a really good job. Let's listen to what the 19's got to say now. Well, in good shape. Still P2. I don't know why the 24 is so pitted. If he isn't, just keep up with this pace. You're going to see him, and you'll stay ahead of the others. Well, none of us understand why the 24 didn't pit. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, Rudy's great. Like, he's got this figured out. He's feeling that once they get into the traffic right now, that he's going to be able to hold position on these guys, which, again, Martin just got held up right there by the by the, uh, the yeah. one car. So he, he lost some momentum. He's now he's got the 18 boat. on back of him. So the 18's trying to get back up there to get his lap back, and right? You hear so him get, all these things going on. You hear him get nervous about the grip level in his car as well. Jamie, Jamie Mack. Yeah, guys, we talked about it earlier, and, and Martin was able to catch William Byron earlier in the race, but passing was a whole different story. And and I've seen William Byron's been in a little bit of traffic, has held him up, and it's almost like you know a, a, a gain and loss each lap. Martin's quicker, but but catching and passing is gonna be two different stories. Well, there's more to this story. Right now, Kyle Larson is the fastest car on the racetrack, hundred percent, with Chase Briscoe, Ryan Blaney. Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick all faster than Byron or Truex. Absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. Actually, I reached over and hit Chad and pointed that five car on the board very, very fast, hanging a tenth and a half to two tenths on those front two guys of William Byron and Martin Truex. And that's exactly what Rudy Fugel and, and William Byron want right now is they want the five to get to the tail of that 19. Put pressure on him, slow him down a little bit so they can maintain that lead that they've got. Right now at three seconds with only 28 laps to go, that's going to be really tough. Well, remember point of view. Rudy Fugel has a win in the bank. He can afford to gamble with William Byron. They already have a victory this year. 100%. The ones chasing them, not so much. We listened in on the leaders. We can keep this pace. We're going to win the race. I believe. I believe it. We can keep this pace. Well, cheerleading, and he's right. But again, it's so important putting a lot of weight on that driver, William Byron. Try to save and manage these passes. If somebody comes up on you, figure out where he can pass you, and you can get right back into taking care of business, managing this run, optimizing these lap times. The way Byron got the lead was staying out on 11 lap older tires back at lap 259 during the caution. Here's a quick progressive race summary with 25 laps to go. Byron one of six leaders 12 lead changes Ryan Blaney's led the most laps 10 cars on the lead lap Kyle Busch now the first car one lap down five caution flags.
So was Rudy Bugle doing a sales job on William Byron? What I do you don't think? think he's really selling it. I think okay. he's telling the facts, and it's real, because right now they are both falling back, The both being the 19 and the 24. They got cars on the outside. The 18 just passed the 24 to get his lap back. The 19 was just in a storm between the 3 and the 31. So those guys right now are both in a big deficit compared to some of these guys that pitted just a little bit ago. They're trying to stay out of harm's way. Clint's just seen it right here, Clint. I mean, the 24 just ran a 24.80 second lap. Martin Truex ran a 24.80 second lap. They've all but flatlined right now with a three second gap. Absolutely. He ain't wrong. It's going to come down to either one of those guys and how they manage these lap cars and get through the traffic. Because, but the lap cars are the different. You're not passing right. the lap They're cars. They're passing, They're passing you. you. Yeah. And that's where it's out of your control right now. Well, it is, but it isn't. In my opinion, you have to be smart as a race car driver and time that. And not only yourself, have that spotter up there on the roof. You help me optimize these lap times and these guys passing me. Make sure they pass me and catch me where I'm not going to be hung door to door coming off of a corner because that's going to kill your lap. Now I'm starting to get excited. It's, <laughs> and, and you can see this from our vantage point. I mean, where are they? You see William Byron almost pretty much at the start finish line, whereas Truex is coming off a of turn four. There it is. Truex dealing with Tyler Reddick there off, off of four. Last time by, uh, Kyle Larson. Quicker than the two leaders and Denny Hamlin six tenths faster than the leaders. So fourth and fifth place, and perhaps even Blaney may be right up here with this lead trio when this ends. Yeah, Larson and, and Hamlin are the fastest cars on the racetrack, no doubt. I just don't think they have, there's too much real estate in between those cars. How about Kyle Larson, Jamie Mack? Yeah, guys, just been watching his, uh, his, his shifting, his throttle traces. He's actually, we, we heard uh, Randall Burdett say it earlier to Tyler Reddick, Kyle's staying in fourth gear every once in a while going to fifth gear. And it, it could be because he's in a little bit of traffic, but, but he's actually run fourth gear all the way around the track. The other car that, that we're, we've talked a little bit about, and he's on a different pitch strategy, is 11. You know, we, we've focused on Larson, Byron, and Truex, but Denny Hamlin on those newer tires is coming fairly quick. 18 laps to go. No one on the racetrack has tires older than our race leader, William Byron. Watch Kyle, we talked about it in fourth gear, jumps on the throttle, and that thing just slides sideways. And now, that doesn't only impact that lap, he's taking another lap of lifespan off those tires. Four, four, five after that. But I think that is exactly what that was. That's a product of being in that fourth gear, and that thing, when he got to the gas, wants to blow the tires off of it. Pretty solid day for Kyle Larson. Needed one. Yeah, they've had a lot of problems here the last few weeks. Well, it's down to 1.6 seconds. William Byron to Martin Truex. 17 laps to go. A tenth a lap would get him there. So, Larry, what are the trends? Well, what I'm looking at, the trends of 2022, and if you look at the first six races, the average of the final caution was seven laps to go, and that's about nine laps from right now. I'm telling you, though, I, I don't even know if we need a caution. He's William Byron starting to slip and slide around. I watched him miss the bottom down there. This lap right here, I think you're going to really see him be swallowed up by Martin Truex. But the thing that's really going to benefit them is you got Chase Elliott trying to get his lap back. So he's ripping around trying to get past the 19. Then you got the 17 right behind him. Who's going to hold up? Yeah, the 19. watch this. This was a big. Yeah, again, a couple tenths. At this pace, Truex would catch Byron with about seven laps to go. Oh. Then what? Well, that's just it. You know, you heard Jamie McMurray talk about it. Catching him's one thing, making the pass on him's another. But I feel like it's a little bit different conversation now that these tires are extremely wore out. You've got a lot of lappers, a lot of other traffic out there on the racetrack. You're navigating around cars that are passing you. You're passing some. A little better opportunity this time around. Well, yesterday's Xfinity race came down to the final laps and two teammates duked it out. 
with a lot of contact for the win. How about last weekend? Dakota. Right? I'm going to move you out of the way. Every not race, so fast. I'm going to this, back. This year we've seen it. Like, guys are not afraid to put the bumper on somebody else to move them because they know that the recovery rate is high. So they're like, look, if I get into you a little bit, I know you're going to still finish the race, man. I'm moving on. I'm checking out. Denny Hamlin fastest uh, lap last time by, almost a second quicker than William Byron. 11 to go. Truex one second back, Larson three back, Hamlin 3.3. Yeah. They're all going to be in a cluster. It's it's amazing how it all shakes out this way, right? Here we are with 10 laps to go this time by. You've got the leader in second place running within three quarters of a second one another with third and fourth catching them at a very rapid pace. Yeah, I don't think we're looking at just a, a two two horse race here oh. at narrowing down to the end of this thing. I think there's going to be four of them going for it. That 11 car is extremely fast. The four as well. Jamie McMurray. Yeah, guys, just watching the 11. And I mean, Clint, think about this. When you get to be uh, on the aggress the aggressor in this, having those little bit newer tires makes it so much easier. Being Truex or William Byron, who have been out there on old tires, it's so hard to defend at a track like this when you just don't have any grip. And exactly what Denny Hamlin, the four of Kevin Harvick, what they need is this 19 to catch the 24. Get to race and be door to door. Give us a, you know, because when they do that, that's going to clip another two, three tenths off of them racing going to help you out even more. I think you're going to see about the time Truex catches William Byron. It's going to be exactly the time at 11 in the four catch Truex. Lots of traffic. Seven cars right ahead. They're going to catch them in the next two to three laps. He's there. And when I say he, I think the 11 of Hamlin. Way faster. Starting to see some frustration. Hard to get those lap cars out of the way. 11's going to get a move on the outside of the 19 here. 100%. I think he's oh. going to cross him over right here. A diamond is now he's going to roll to his outside. There he goes. William Byron there loves there. seeing that in his mirror. Second and third, side by side. Harrison Burton just ahead. Nowhere to go. Hamlin forges ahead. I don't think he's clear yet. Not yet. Man, he wants that 21 out of his way blocking him now Kevin Harvick looking to the outside Denny Hamlin is there five to go who would have thought 20 laps ago that the 11 would potentially be passing for the lead with five laps to go in this race potentially here it is and I don't think William Byron is going to have anything for him stay over there hold your tight Byron trying to fight him off. Hamlin to the stripe first. Harvick trying to close and take away clear, second. Clear. All clear. Lap cars, four of them under a blanket, dead ahead. And it's Kevin Harvick. He's going to be hungry for it, too. Don't you think he ain't willing to do what it takes? Been a long time since he's been in victory lane. He's been hearing an awful lot about these yes. young guns, these new guys coming in and taking all the glory. Well, oh. but he's going to have to knock an old guy out of the way with Denny Hamlin. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he, those two guys, they are hungry for a win, need to turn their seasons around. They're side by side in front of the leader, midway down the back straightaway. Three cars, they're going to have trouble negotiating with two laps to go. There's that little pack, that battle going on. And Hamlin's going to get to it first. This may be Harvick's opportunity. And, and one of those cars is Harvick's teammate, the 10 of Eric Amarola. These guys are side by side. And they're not giving way. Oh, Harvick's going to move up. up. Rolling up to top. Coming to the white flag. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Where will Hamlin go? Kevin's got to run. Kevin's looking to the bottom. Hamlin, excuse me. Almirola moved up. Hamlin made a clean pass. That's it. Within two oh. car lengths. Not enough. Turn three. Final drive. time. We're not get there. Wow. Now that's Old a different. Towner, Denny, Hamlin. We heard. 
checkered flag for Hamlin. We don't have to hear from us anymore, huh? Wow. Fix their problem, fix their season, the rest is history. A win changes everything in this sport. And man, them coming back out of nowhere, running these guys down, awesome day. Great strategy, great play right there. For a guy that said he had a 15th place car this morning when we spoke to him on the red carpet, I think he just showed a different face of that car. Was it Hamlin who told you you can't win the Kentucky Derby on a three-legged mule? <laughs> That's right. And here he is. Well, somehow he turned a thoroughbred or a mule into a thoroughbred. 41-year-old Denny Hamlin beats Kevin Harvick to the checkered flag. Old guys rule in <laughs> Richmond. <laughs> what a great race. We saw it. We knew it. We knew there was going to be strategy calls. We knew there was going to be opportunity for guys to do things. They took opportunity there. That's your first man with your second little one. That's awesome. Hadn't forgotten how to do a burnout, has he? Nope. He only led the last five laps of this race. You saw, you heard him talking to spotter Chris Lambert. 47th career victory. And to win at home, what could be sweeter? Yeah, Not to mention, some... it is the Toyota Owners 400. Hey. All of our strategy work, all of our plans, what were we looking for going into this race weekend? Were these Gibbs cars going to be able to turn it around, show up, and do business at their best racetrack? They just answered that. Picked a pretty good way to score his first top 10 finish of the season. And then slid it and parked it right on the start finish line. He's going to be pumped. <laughs> this is a big win for him. And for Coach Joe Gibbs, Toyota's first win of the season. Perfect timing rolling into Martinsville for next weekend's race. Denny doesn't run too bad there either. Not too shabby at all. Jamie Little. That is about the most pumped up I have ever seen Denny Hamlin. First off, Denny, where did you come from? Yeah, it was just a uh, great strategy there and just drove, drove as hard as I could. And just so proud of this whole FedEx Camry team. Um, man, it's just never given up. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind, maybe just a little, but uh, you know, they got this car right there towards the end. And uh, wow, it's just unbelievable. Denny, it hasn't been an easy start to the season. Not even a top 10 to the first six races. What does this win mean to you, to Toyota, just to kick things off here at your home track of all places? Yeah, I talked to you before the race. You know, we needed a data point. We needed something, uh, a good run to kind of balance ourselves on other tracks. And obviously, I think we got it here. All right, so much for that talk of the young guys. Look who's in victory lane. It's Denny Hamlin. Another one of our veterans today with a very strong run. Kevin Harvick, the end of the race, you were chasing him down. You were right there. Just fell a little bit short. Yeah, just really proud of everyone on our Mobile One Ford Mustang for uh, just staying in there and doing, having a great strategy and doing everything that they did all day. It's really the first clean day that we've had all year. Cars have been fast and, and um, had a shot there at the end. Just I wanted to be close enough with the white to just take a swipe at him, but um, yeah, the lap cars there kind of got in the way and I lost a little bit of ground. But Still a great day for us and, and just um, hopefully a little momentum in a positive direction. Nice job, Kevin. Thanks. Denny Hamlin heads for victory lane. A winner again in Richmond and turns Toyota's season around and parks it right on the start finish line.
congratulations to Coca-Cola Racing family driver Denny Hamlin for a breakthrough win for Toyota here in Richmond. Harvick second, Byron third, Martin Truex finishes fourth. He's with Regan Smith. Martin Truex Jr. strong all day long in the 19th car, battling at the end. You had the leader in your sights, and then the guys with tires came behind you. How frustrating is that to have so many strategies? Uh, yeah, I mean it's frustrating. But it's part of it here, you know. It's part of it's part of the whole day, and obviously we uh, we did good there for a while. Let's try not to get run over here by the 11, so we might want to come this way a little bit. Yeah, I mean uh, James did a great job all day with strategy, getting us up front, getting us the lead. Our auto owners, uh, Camry TRD, was just super fast out front, super fast in clean air. You know, at the end there, I think we just tried to gamble and um, tried to gamble on beating the 24, and then he ended up doing our strategy, which we both screwed up. So, um, you know, obviously heads up the other way. I think we had the best car, but it doesn't matter. So I'm just overall just really proud of our guys and, um, you know, obviously a big step in the right direction from Phoenix and completely different uh, – Completely different mindset coming here um, and after after today, what we can do going forward. So excited about that. Just thanks to everybody at TRD Toyota and uh, everybody back at JGR for working their butts off. Very strong day for Martin Truex Jr. Well, he did his job. He caught William Byron and passed him and then came two drivers with fresher tires. What an ending to this race, and it was a strategy race. These races are always won in a different way, not the same way that we saw last week in Texas at Coda where they were beating and banging. This race, in my opinion, was won on top of that box, Jed. I agree 100%, and that's why I wanted to get up here this weekend and watch this race from this perspective. This race is always so exciting to me because you have so many opportunities. The, the guy that won the race had 40-plus laps more less on his tires than the 24 did, and the 24 led to the last few laps. I mean, you just don't see that coming unless you're really paying attention to the race and that's what makes these races so great and so much fun and it took until this win uh, for Hamlin to pop up into the top 20 <laughs> in the standing <laughs> tells you how bad he needed that win so he will go to rule off mortgage victory lane and become the seventh different winner of this season and break the string of winners under 30 at 12 Hamlin scores one for the NASCAR senior citizen set well, we'll get ready for Saturday night in Martinsville next week, and you'll hear from the studio in Charlotte right after this. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.